I just think this world's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I'm going to make myself a cup of good morning, America. You all want some? <coughs> it's the best damn coffee you're going to get anywhere, buddy. Welcome to Coffee with the Curmudgeons. It's Friday, and it's a feel-good Friday. It's a feel-good Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I am with uh, my co-host, the uh, basically the Russian paid-for ads on Facebook, Jason Allen. Hi, my name is Vladimir. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to besi- uh, I'm going to besiege all your timelines on your social media and tell you what to think and what to feel. Are you ready? It is a funky feel good Friday. Sounds like you said social media. Right. Know, we're just like we're we're like we're not we're not doing well. <laughs> we're, not, we're just not doing well. We're, we're not doing well here, folks. Yeah, no. we, we're good. We're good. We're, we're no, in constant. We're doing well. We are in constant control of everything. Everything is fine. Go about your business. Don't pay attention to us. No one pay attention to us at least for a couple hours. We got a guest today too. Alexa, what's the weather like? No, oh, wait. Alexa, what's the weather like? Currently in Portland, it's sixty degrees with cloudy skies. Today, you, you can expect rainy weather with a high of sixty-eight degrees okay. and a low of fifty-one degrees. So let's talk about let's talk about my first mm-hmm. gripe of the day. Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, Okay, I watched uh, last night. So we have you got that. There's the Fox stations. Okay, right? People don't like the Fox, but whatever. <laughs> but they have like Family yeah. Guy and Seth MacFarlane stuff. People don't like Family Guy. Okay, that's fine. Love whatever. Seth MacFarlane. Whatever. Yeah. And he's got this new show. Uh, a new Star Trek show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. it's not Star Trek. But it's called The Orville. I love that show. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it last night. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Actually, I'm, I'm loving the the uh, the last two episodes since the premiere and the net. Yeah. Like, really good. Yeah. Like, it's like, no, let's keep this going. They're getting right? into the groove. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So it was a good one. And and he's he's copping. Look, let's be honest here. Oh, guess what? <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, because it's That's like we're hotline. late. We're right. Late. Well, we are a little late this morning. Okay. So know. anyway. Yeah. So before, before we say good anything. Morning. Uh-huh. Hey, hang on a second. Yes. Uh, so, uh, um, so, so I'm watching that, and then the the ten o'clock news comes along. Okay, gotcha. I was looking for some news, and it was crap, <laughs> as it always is. But yeah, but they do the weather. Yeah. And it was hot yesterday. Yeah. It was uh-huh. like almost ninety or something. Eighty five. Eighty five. Eighty six. Yeah. And so, you know, like typical Portland, it's like, yeah. well, well, we'll continue that nice weather into the weekend or whatever. No. Wouldn't it be refreshing if a local uh, newscast, the weatherman, just gets up there and says, hey, this is Chet. We're here at the weather desk, and the, and it's going to be complete crap. Back to you. You know what? I blame Californians. Yeah? you What? Because Californians, why? Y'all come here and you get on and you be the weather people mm-hmm. on the show, and we got to keep that. I shouldn't have been watched. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. It wasn't the regular guy. Who knows? Or the gal. Yeah. You need to have a, someone born and raised here as the weather. Just lock them to the desk. Ah. And and then maybe. make make them go to college in state. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that they know how you. weather works in Portland, and the way weather works in Portland is you right. have no clue. One minute it's ninety degrees, the next minute it's sixty degrees. And right. Anyway, I'm I'm in the totally wrong. I'm 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 in the wrong gig, right? Yeah. I mean, what other career, right? At, at career day, they don't say to you, "Hey, Jason, you know, you're you're a slacker, you're an underachiever. We have got a job for you. I want you to go be a meteorologist because you can be wrong fifty percent of the time That's right. and not get fired." And Alexa, so I, yeah. And so what's I, the weather like? Right. Did it's, she, she's on it. 
What? Oh, you did Currently in See? Portland, it's 60 degrees with cloudy skies. There you go. Today, mm -hmm. you can expect rainy weather. Yes, we with are. With a high did. of 68 degrees right. and a low of 51 degrees. There you go. There you go. So we. <laughs> so let's. So luckily, mm -hmm. luckily, because I'm really cranky. What's new? It seems like yeah, this week. Yeah. Uh, but luckily, we have guests. We do. That's we what we're lucky. We so we don't need to sit here and listen to me whine, yeah, complain, yeah, and moan. Luckily, okay, yeah. Luckily, I have uh, I have superpowers of uh, reading people's minds, mm -hmm. and I knew that you were going to be a bit cranky this morning. So I thought to myself, "Good, who can we get as a guest that will turn that frown?" Upside, upside down. down. And of course, what Nate popped into my brain box was Ed DeVito, right? Because Ed DeVito. He's a local author and, and I, I call him uh, he, he's our he's our local he's our local sage. Okay. Okay. He is my personal Facebook uh kind of <laughs> yogi. Oh, okay. He, 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 uh, he's a center, you know, he centers me, the chi, all that stuff. Uh -huh. But a fantastic author, uh, the paradigm, uh, uh, the, par the Woodstock Paradox and the Woodstock Paradigm. Hmm. Yes, and I, 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 two gripping books, and I hope, and we're going to get to this, a uh, uh, little tease down the line, but I hope he's working on the third book. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, he left it as a cliffhanger. He can't leave it as a cliffhanger. On Amazon, I need, the I, Woodstock Paradox. Yeah, I need closure. That was released in October uh, October 10th, 2013 mm -hmm. on uh, Amazon. Uh, folks, uh, we have on the line today, on the Newsbox line. Right. Author. Author. Ed, Ed DeVito. DeVito. Yeah. Ed, how are you doing? Oh, very well, Jason. How are you today? Yeah, I am doing great. I have uh, been looking forward to this interview all week uh, because... I, I uh, like you. I have been glued to PBS watching the uh, the Vietnam War by Ken Burns, and oh yeah, uh, the, hey. last night the closing episode of it was to me uh, gut wrenching watching it. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I I love Ken Burns' stuff. I mean, I'm I, I always watch his Civil War at least once a year. And uh, and I was excited when they said they were going to come out with the Vietnam War one, and it was going to be a you know multi-parter, really dive deep, drill down into this. And uh, where do you think? First of all, where do you think this ranks as uh, in the pantheon of uh, Ed Burns's Ed Burns? Uh, <laughs> wrong uh, person. Jason, yeah, Jason, our our line is really breaking up. Do we have a clear line? Or, or uh, do, should we try calling again? You're coming in really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll listen as best I can, but sometimes I can't get gotcha. a full sentence from from your end. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess the basic question is, what did you think of the Ken Burns series? Well, uh, it it really uh, you know I I kind of made I had to make myself watch it, uh, and I felt like I needed to, mm. and uh, I uh, I'm glad I did. Uh, it was the, some parts of it were certainly hard to take, and yeah. I mean that very seriously. Uh, but it, it, it was a brilliant series. Um, he really, uh, he really knocked it out of the park. Yeah, uh, I, he and yeah. and, uh, and uh, Novik, his um, mm -hmm. his uh, ac accomplice, <laughs> right, yes. if you will, and uh, it, it really was a, a marvelous achievement. Right, I I think my two uh, I think the the uh, if I have to parse out the uh, episodes, I think the two favorites for me was uh, the one on the Tet Offensive and then last night's. Yeah, sixty eight certainly was uh, was was uh, and last night. Um, you, you know, did you find yourself identifying with any any of the uh, the witnesses? Yes, I I did. Um, uh, I I uh, identified. Uh, Boy, a, guy, a gentleman last name of Marlantis, Carl okay. Carl Marlantis. I, right. I did a little bit with him, and then the one I I found really intriguing, and I'm I can't remember his name, but he uh, was a GI, and then later turned in, turned into a anti-war protester. And what I remember uh, about it, and uh, why I can't remember his name, but. Uh, such a rapid change. When he came home, he had the long uh, black curly hair and the beard. Yeah. 
That's John Musgrave. John Musgrave, excellent. And I certainly identified uh, with him. I had the most resonance with what he had to say. It, he was like somebody that I could have known mm. uh, at the time. Yeah. And um, but you know, it, it's it's really the other fellow, the uh, the doctor. I guess that was uh, Hal Kushner. He yes. Was, uh, yes. He was. Uh, more of a conservative, you know, his approach, his his, uh, his view of the, the overall view, but but his report of uh, his return uh, was most moving. Right. Yeah. Uh, it just just really got me. It just really kicked my bucket over. I, it was something else. And right. um, uh, and then the the, the 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 ultimate thing was when they finally focused on the wall. It uh, it gra- That's when um, I, <laughs> I finally lost it. Yeah, I, I've been there. Have you Have you ever been out, out I, that way? Uh, unfortunately, I have never been to the wall. Uh, the people who I have talked to that have been there said that there is almost a magnetic quality when you yeah. when you yeah. arri- when you arrive there, and uh, they equated it sometimes. And I I thought this was kind of an intriguing part of it is they equated it sometimes as almost like a paranormal thing where you know if you step into a room and it feels heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that that uh, very similar feeling at a funeral once. There were about 400 people there. Mm. And the guy's wife asked me to take uh some pic- a t- picture of him in mm. in the coffin. Yeah. And the guy, he was something like a local folk hero. He was he was buried in his western shirt and he had a spoons uh in a, in, a, in his hand that he used to play the spoons. He was a real party animal this guy. <laughs> um but as I walked up to it, it really was a physical sensation with all of those people focused on that space that I started to tremble and shake. And it wasn't because I was trembling and shaking. It was, it, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. coming from my nerves. It was coming from what was assaulting me. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like just moving into a space like riding on a train mm. uh, over, over, over with flat wheels. Yeah. And rusty rail. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it felt like that, and and uh, it really was a phenomenon. And I thought, wow, you know, I, you don't hear anything about this, but I think individually we'll experience it at different times in our lives, and uh, that's the way that wall got me. Mm, yeah, very, very, uh, very heavy. So we should ask a little bit about uh, about the uh, Woodstock. Paradox. Yeah. And yeah, the Woodstock Paradox. Yeah. That so this is your book. Uh, tell uh, us a little bit about the well, Woodstock Paradox. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not hearing you very well. You're, you're, it's, it's because you're breaking up. But if you're hearing me, then I'm, we're good. We hear you uh, great. I, uh, I wrote, I, I wrote that book. It was, uh, it's set in 1969, and it, and certainly some of that is uh, spoken of. Uh, is is worked into the the story, uh, but it's it's about a young fellow who who uh, goes to Woodstock and he comes from the future. He's a good uh, he, he's uh, he, he starts out in 1990, and I got the idea from from working with a lot of young people. And in the 90s, I would ask questions, uh, just rhetorical questions, to get to know these kids and because we're going to be living in the woods for a month and, and working on a project. And, and so I would use rhetorical questions like, where would you go if you had a time machine? And it really blew me away that, that uh, a good generation or, or even two later, uh, the, uh, I, one of the most common things I would hear is I would go to Woodstock. Mm. And, heck, you know, if it were me, I'd go to the Pleistocene. I really want to see the, the Mastodon and the, and, and the saber-toothed tiger. I miss these things. But, but, uh, <laughs> but these uh, kids would say this, and I thought, wow, you know, what would that really be like? And that's, that's what, and I based it on two different kids that I knew, one that I worked with uh, in, the, in the judicial system and another one uh, with a conservation program, and they were just totally opposites. So I put a character together out of these two people and uh, make it, uh, looked at it like what would that really be like if, if someone could could uh, travel back in time. And, and it takes place through a, an electrical accident. Oh. The, the, uh, the, the 
but the story develops from there, and at first, it's, of course, it's very hard, difficult for him to, to come to terms with what's happened, to be in a different time, and, and uh, certainly people around him aren't going to believe him. So uh, he has to, you know, it's just the process of, of being there and realizing where he is and saying, wow, you know, that's what he wants to do with this. He wants to go to Woodstock, but, but there's other things going on in this story, and and it brings that time back. And a lot of it, of course, you know, in authors, most authors, their first, their first book has a lot of biographical material in it. But, uh, and, I, and I actually know a lot of the characters. So about the only fantasy in there is the time travel. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the character. But a lot of the people were real, and a lot of the incidents were real. And, uh, but, and of course, there's, there's fictional things, too. You, you know, you have to... Um, and sometimes, who, who was it? Uh, it? It might have been you know, on Facebook where we were talking about. There was a chat going on about this sort of thing, and uh, sometimes you uh, you can tell the truth more clearly uh, and more directly using fiction than you can by trying to be factual. Right. Right. Uh, the one thing when I when I first read the Woodstock Paradox, the first book. Uh, it was very to me. Uh, it what stood out for me not only the the cool plot and, and the the uh, dialogue work, but um, was the uh, evocative nature of it. In fact, it makes it's one of those rare things that makes you feel like you're there, even you know, even when you uh, weren't physically there. You know, uh, in you know in '69 in you know the what Haight Ashbury era. You know. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, that that I, I kind of in the writing I'm I'm seeing the scene in my head like I was watching a movie, mm. and and that's what I try to catch. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about even further back than than the books. Let, let, let's uh, let's do some time travel ourselves real quick this morning. Let, let's All right. let, let's go back to uh, um, let's go back to sixty seven to sixty nine. A, a young, okay. a young, fresh-faced Ed Devito is. Uh, it look, you know, looks at the world and uh, tell. Give us a little, I guess, thumbnail synopsis uh, about um, what it was like in that cauldron era, especially in like '68 when uh, uh, tensions ran really high. I mean, ML, you know, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Robert Kennedy. Uh, the Tet Offensive, um, everything just kind of f- feeling uh, like it's spinning out of control. Oh, yeah. One of the uh, things that this uh, Vietnam series reminded me of is that at the time, we were probably in a, in a worse state in what the, 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 the depth mm. of pain and confusion that people in this country felt than we are today. Yeah, uh, we have a whole different. It's a whole different thing going on today, and it and it and it certainly uh, demands our attention. Uh, but this time, uh, I don't. A lot of historians will tell you that uh, the, the country w- had never been that divided since 1860. Yeah, and uh, it it really. Um, uh, in some ways, we see the same sort of energy today. It's the same alignments, and you can follow those those alignments and, and that attitude. Uh, people that just don't seem to get it, yeah. and um, they look at you and think you don't get it either. <laughs> it's, it's like the, and the it's total understandable. Di- and yeah. you know, I read a really good uh, article by Andrew Sullivan in New York Magazine. Uh, that's this current issue. Uh, and he talks about it as uh, a way to understand it is, is through understanding tribalism. Mm. He was saying that America wasn't made for humans uh, because it doesn't take tribalism into consideration the way, like some of the parliamentary systems do in Europe, where you have to work with coalitions and bridge the gaps that, that uh, can come uh, through the kind of pol- polarity system that we have. Or, uh, it's um, but getting keeping that thought in mind, going back to that time, I was um, coming from a very conservative background. I was a Boy Scout, 
And uh, my sister got me interested, and in, I had read none there, call it treason, mm -hmm. and, um, you, know, you know, about communists under, you know, hiding behind every bush and how they were uh, perver perverting our system and, and taking over our government. And, uh, you know, you really get uh, where you kind of see, see it when you look at it because you're not getting the whole picture. Yeah. And um, so I, I was going to John Birch Society meetings. Whoa. Mm. And uh, I was in Young Republicans for Goldwater. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's, you know, come on. Uh, that's pretty conservative. And uh, the Boy Scout... Were you, were you hanging out uh, milk and cookies me, with uh, the... When I went to Virginia for, to, uh, to college. I went to, uh, it was at the time, it was Richmond Professional Institute. And it was a teacher's college, but they had a really good art school. Uh, it was a, it was a and it was a, a ur, an urban cam campus, so it had a lot of uh, interesting you know uh, ideas and, and yeah. things happening there. It wasn't wasn't like uh, it, it was more of a party school and, than anything like the University of Virginia or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, those kids used to come and party at our school, <laughs> but um, the uh, I, I got it there. I, I had a girlfriend who was a little she was kind of beatnik. You know, mm. just had that look, and there was, you know, we we got got into some great conversations, and I said, well, uh, you know, I was making contacts in, in, in Richmond, and we went to a John Birch Society meeting, oh, and because uh, I used to go to them on on Staten Island where I grew up, and uh, she asked some just simple questions, just just to know, and and their reaction was so hostile, mm. and so polarizing. But I got it. Yeah. It was really curious. It was like such an easy lesson, but I got it. And we both walked out. And, and uh, my formative years, the last two years, say, in high school before that, were just thrown on the, on the, on the, the dust heap. Uh, it just exploded it. Mm -hmm. And I said, these people just don't get it. They're so, and I really needed to find out what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's... You know, the, the, meanwhile, of course, all of this, this background of Vietnam, it, and I felt like, well, it, it's not going to touch me. I've got a college deferment. Mm. And, uh, but I, at the time, I, I was wondering, you know, in fact, I was, I'd even applied to West Point before I went to, so it wasn't, mm. it, it really wasn't that of uh, avoidance. Yeah. Uh, where I was, it was just just assumption. It was we 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 have words for it today. We call it white privilege. You mm. just uh, go the route that's sort of planned for you, or that you that's presented to, and and you really don't have to deal with a lot of things, and 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 you have a lot of opportunities, and I did. So, um, keeping that in mind, uh, I'm, we're walking out of this meeting, and I'm thinking. Uh, where do I go from here? Yeah. Well, the next thing that happened is, is I fell in love. And uh, that was heavy because uh, you're not supposed to fall in love with a guy if you're a guy, and that's what I did. Yeah. It just, it just uh, changed everything. And uh, it, again, it, it, it was something that as a younger kid I thought, I, I'll grow out of this. You know, because this just isn't happening, and I don't want to be like one of them, you know, not even knowing what them was. <laughs> uh, so it, it was, uh, a, 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 as the country was going through its troubles, I was going through mine. Mm. Do, you, so, uh, do you feel it was? Ahead, uh, do you feel it was like a generational thing when you talk about the people just didn't, you know, some people they just didn't get it. Do you think it was like a uh, people who were uh, maybe a little older back at that time, and they they had the you know the Cold War slash uh, you know World War II well, mentality? Yeah, yeah, we, right. We talk about the greatest generation, but yeah. you know this generation were were pretty stuck in their ways. They they were uh, uh, they were very difficult to talk to. They didn't talk. They didn't express their feelings, yeah. except maybe in, in uh, it, it was, I, I don't, I wonder, I want to, don't want to gen, overly generalize because certainly people are complex and, and there mm -hmm. were so many fine people that came out of that period, you know, they, yeah. they, they, but, but so much of this, this um, manifest destiny, you know, America's always right kind of approach. Uh, yeah. They just didn't want to, they wouldn't discuss it. They just wouldn't see it. Mm 
Right. And uh, they 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 had awful names for, for for people who were trying to point it out, like Martin Luther King. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they, he got very little respect from that greatest generation. Let's put it that way. They right. they wanted to see him go to jail, and uh, you know it was all his fault, and for causing trouble. And and that's not what it was about. Right. And and it's easier for us to see that today, even though uh, it's distorted, because the way the man is lionized, uh, and 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 it, he should be, but. The problem is when we put our heroes on pedestals, they're not people anymore that we can relate to. Right. So uh, this is a problem, uh, and in a way, it, it helps. Again, it, it separates you and enables you to go on uh, with with less connection to to what's going on, unless you, you can take less responsibility. Right. So uh, I, I I could see that you know with. with uh, with uh, Martin Luther King, and and uh, again, I came in terms. And another thing, like when I went to Virginia, so there's so many clashes of old and new, and I'm still working through some of this stuff. Uh, like uh, I joined, my brother had been in the in the um, uh, North South Skirmish Association, which was a collection of historians and Civil War buffs, mm-hmm. and. Um, so when I went to Virginia, I just fell into a crowd of, of Confederates, and they were uh, they were in the first. Uh, it was uh, I'll, I'll just say it as they did: First Regiment Engineers, Army in Northern Virginia, <laughs> and uh, these guys um, picked a uh, an outfit, uh, an engineer outfit that was in uh, the Army uh, in 1861, yeah. and uh, uh, they copied it. They, the wives made uniforms, and and uh, we would. Uh, it was, uh, I had a full uh, VMI great coat, which was authentic, mm. because, uh, and uh, you could call it original, <laughs> even though it was new, because they still dress like that. Yeah. And uh, the women made me a uh, a, a kepi and and uh, and a short jacket with CSA engineer buttons. And wow. uh, we would get out and on Jefferson Davis' birthday and file, fire volume, uh, you know, uh, there was a, a general would come down from Washington and give a speech to the five or, or six, seven thousand people that lined Monument Avenue around the Jefferson Davis Monument. The time, it was a different world. Yeah. Profoundly different from where we're at today. So, I, you know, I'm struggling with some of this stuff, uh, even today. Right, because 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 uh, the colonel, the commander of our team, was a VMI graduate, an old Virginia blue blood family, and they took me in, mm. and I loved this guy. I, his wife said to me, "Eddie, most of us were born here, but you're a southerner by choice." <laughs> gotcha. And, and, yeah. and there was history all over his house. There were yeah. there were paintings on the walls of his ancestors in their velvet coats and and satin sashes and. Uh, an elephant's foot full of sabers, and that that came down through his family. And he mm. was uh, in the cavalry, one of the last horse cavalry outfits to be mustered out. Mm. And he proudly told me of his action with General, well, it wasn't General at the time, but Douglas MacArthur at the Bonus Army March in Washington D.C. Mm. And he was there. Wow. And he loved General MacArthur. This this guy. He said when he was a uh, when he was a uh, a cadet, he came. I guess he was a general, but he wasn't the four-star general. He became later. But he came to the uh, uh, to v- to, to uh, VMI to right. give a speech, and uh, he uh, the colonel was was uh, a cadet, and he he had he he was on the service detail, and and spilled a bowl of soup on the guy. Uh, <laughs> he was so nervous, and. Uh, uh, the man turned to him and said, "It's okay, son." Put his hand on his shoulder. He says, it's "Just an accident." Mm. And and he said, after that, that guy, the man owned him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you could just see his eyes just light up. Yeah. He just thought, you know, you you couldn't say anything uh, right. else. Uh, so, uh, and I love this guy. And uh, seriously, the, their version of 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 the war, whether they, whether uh, the, the way 
a lot of us don't understand it today is remember Virginia was their country yeah and it was co- always country first that's the same attitude as anybody who is patriotic and puts country first and Virginia was their country the United States came second right yeah so so whether or not they they uh, agreed with secession uh they 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 those that felt duty and honor bound went with and that was lee's dilemma mm-hmm. and uh you know so you you uh you have to take that into consideration but at the time and today of course i i i get it you know there's no way i would have fought for the south today at, but at the time, I would have followed this guy if uh, uh, it was 1861, and uh, they, uh, you know, were being called up. And uh, I was just a kid. I was 18 years old, and and I loved him. You know, he was he was, and uh, you know, I could never really figure out why uh, they did take me in because these people are, uh, you know, he he was in first regiment engine, uh, but he was in. Uh, Army, uh, let's see, well, he, of course he was a, a VMI colonel, uh, and uh, company of mili- military historians in Virginia Roundtable, that, that kind of stuff, mm, total, gotcha. total uh, uh, blue blood. So, uh, <clears throat> so Ed, uh, take us up to 2017, though. I mean, a generation has passed. Yeah, and, could you repeat and, that? Again, we're breaking up. I don't okay. know why your line is so so poor. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, Can you hear me right now? I, uh, uh, in 2017, in 2017, uh, it, yeah. time has passed, and uh, a generation has passed, and uh, we're still debating uh, Confederate flags and statues. Oh, yeah. I mean, ha- and you, you had this experience of uh kind of growing up or, or being around this uh where are we at in 2017 after the generation is past your generation is up you're more knowledgeable now i mean is there room for this kind of uh, it, there seems to be no tolerance for this now and and i th- well 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 jason one thing i understand when when southerners talk about their heritage mm-hmm. uh you you have to take that into consideration. On the other hand, one of the things that, that tipped me off the fence as far as my willingness to let go was when it was explained to me, you know, uh, Rommel was a, was a good man. He was an honest man. He was a great general. But you don't see his statue in Berlin. Mm. And, and uh, I get that. You know, I get it. And, and reluctantly, uh, you know, it, it's a different time, a different awareness. We have to go the extra mile to make up for the gaps that, that, that have come down that, that, were, that we were born with and that we have had to contend with all of our lives. If we're to be one people, we have to listen to the other side. Mm. And, and that uh, seems to me a no-brainer. Mm. And, and some of that, the... the, the, the there's pain in that. that you got to accept it uh, and, and uh, uh, embrace it and be willing to transcend it. Gotcha. Because I, I often think uh, about today and uh, the disconnect between the uh, you know and the polar opposites, where you could you could be in the same room and you could hear or see the same thing either on TV or someone talk, and yet come away with two distinctly different impressions and outlooks on it. And uh, it it has always I guess puzzled me a little bit about how um, how to bridge that. How to talk with somebody who vehemently disagrees not only with what you know what you think is right and what you believe, but vehemently uh, disagrees with just almost with just who you are. Yeah, um, you know. Again, I would defer to Andrew Sullivan's article. He covers that. He really nails it. Mm. And he relates, again, to tribalism. And in the tribe, there's us and them. Uh, As you get uh, 
we all kind of fall in where like you can see it today we're we're falling into these these uh where uh, on facebook i'll have a lot of friends and 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 w- the first thing uh that's very difficult to see is you tend you know you the the enemy of my enemy is my friend mm. and you'll see enemies of our our enemy that do not live up to the standards that we may have for ourselves, but we're willing to let it slide. Mm. Someone used an example on Facebook um, uh, where uh, uh, they they said, uh, oh, I'm going to have to come back to that because I want to think of the right way to phrase it. Okay. Um, But but it was that sense of uh, the enemy... Of my enemy is my friend. Right, right. Uh, you just you, you you let it slide. You uh, uh, you kind of you don't you don't call attention to it. And the people who do uh, are jumped on. And and the higher up, there's there's <laughs> examples of authors, uh, writers uh, who are conservative in viewpoint, but see what's wrong with what's going on. Uh, with their party, with the Republican Party, for example, and yeah. and they might and they'll write something about it. Well, I don't think we should, you know, trickle down doesn't work. And all of a sudden, everybody jumps on them, right. and they're 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 vilified. They lose their jobs. It's, well, the the left is doing the same thing. Sure, it's 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 kind of a I, I get exactly what you're saying because it's almost like a case of a tribal betrayal. That's it. I, That's yeah. right. You know. That's right, and and the and the the example I'm looking for uh, was was uh, some of the things that are blatantly false, and mm. that you and I would look at and say that's blatantly false. Yeah, and and they use it as if it was truth, and the fact is, my sense of it is is they know it's false, but there, it's not. It that doesn't matter because it's still real because yeah. they can use it as a tool. Right. I've uh, I've learned, uh, especially in the last, uh, what, 15, 16, 17 months through the presidential campaign and now into the new administration, I've kind of attached and kind of uh, almost uh, hugged a, 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 a term uh, that hits home to me called, you know, intellectual dishonesty. Where you know it's not yeah. on, not only a fact is a fact is a fact or it's or it's not a fact, but you believe you not only believe it's not correct, but you sell it anyways because it echoes whatever. Because or, it's working. Yeah, and it's working. It's giving you an advantage. It's ammunition in your tank. You know. Yeah, and, uh, I, and uh, that that that's that's it and it doesn't matter it's like it's like a a a slash and burn approach but the fact is uh, and this is where it's really sobering is this Mm. is very destructive right uh when we can't come together and and in in our government the people's government and and arrive at compromises that enable us to solve problems that we see coming up uh, that are basic, simple problems that, that, that really do have solutions that work, that are time-tested and proven. You know, one town or one city gets it, and they spread it around. And, and, uh, but they, we just can't do it because it's, it's not their idea or, our, or it's not our idea. And yeah. it, it, the polarization is the thing that's very serious because it can really spiral out of control very easily. Right. So I, I hope you can hear us over here. Uh, so do you think it's worse today than it was back in, say, the late 60s, this tribalism? Is it worse now in 2017? Um, it's different. Uh, I felt more, it felt worse then uh, because we don't have cities burning. Mm, we had point. cities burning. Yeah. Well, and there, was, there was a war going on, and it was in the streets. There were real bullets flying in Berkeley. Right. They were, uh, they were, they were cop cars being tipped over and burned. Uh, it was a whole, whole downtown districts were being smashed. Uh, college campuses were, were totally, totally out of control. 
uh, it was worse. It right. was on the verge of, of shooting war, and we had it. And we had, I mean, when those kids were shot at Kent State, yeah, that, right. was, that was it. I said, fuck this, man. Yeah. I'm sorry if I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> pardon me, beat me. But, but uh, <laughs> it's time to, 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 take, to take it serious. Yeah, you know, and and uh, and that you know they just and again they just didn't get it because they would do all the wrong things. We yearned for them to reach out to us. We were their children, and this was the greatest generation. Mm. So we can't gloss over the fact that the greatest generation were responsible for this ridiculous situation. Right, they it, did all the wrong things. They were coming from a place of of American exceptionalism of empire. And and we you know they they it was it was really not uh, something that was uh, that was possible to deal with except by by expressing your rage out on the street. Yeah. Uh, people were dying. Right. So I, it was worse. It was worse. It really could have if, if they if that war hadn't wound down. Yeah. Uh, it, it would have come to civil war. I, I yeah I think so too and I, I was talking with someone um, a while ago and uh, because of, I guess it was prompted by the Vietnam War you know Ken Burns miniseries there and uh, they asked they asked me because I, I I I'll be honest with you, I'm a self professed I'm I'm a I'm a history nut I was a history major in college when I when I uh, uh, find conundrums and life's big issues. I like to draw parallels in, in, in other times of history to try to find some sort of connection or anchor or base. And they they asked me the exact question: Is it worse today than like let's say '68? And my reply was uh, that I thought that it was not as bad as '68 because. And they said, "Okay, explain yourself and give some rationale for that." And I said, sure, "Well, sure. I said think about this. I mean, what would happen today with today's news cycle and today's polarization if two men of prominence, just two men of prominence like uh, Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King, were assassinated in one yeah, year? Yeah, that was happening. I, I, I right. said, I said, man, I said people would be lighting their hair on fire right yeah, now. That's right. Uh, and uh, and so while that does give me kind of a cold comfort of solace. Uh, it's still, I can see kind of history's warning signs and history's lessons that sometimes I think that we just haven't learned a damn thing. Yeah, yeah, you you, you're right. Uh, you know, it, it, you, you've heard the expression, the more things change, the more they <laughs> stay the same. Right. Uh, it's because humans are humans and we've been the same forever. Uh, once we became human, that's who we were. And that comes with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, you know, the tribes d evolve systems to uh, to work to make it work. Uh, and uh, it 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 did work. It got us through some really tight spots. Yeah. Uh, it's some bottlenecks in in our period, our thousands, tens of thousands of years of uh, dealing with other kinds of environmental catastrophes and changes in climate and the kind of things we had to continue with, but it was very different yeah. uh, following the game than it is following, you know, the, 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 the highway. But um, we're, uh, we're at a point now where we really need to, to, to think about the way, the lessons we've We've learned, or uh, or the things we know work. Uh, my my big my big axe to grind right now is is population. I think you know if we don't deal with that, mm. uh, we're we're in, in deep do. Yeah. Uh, there's just too many of us, and the way the system is right now, we have to have that microwave and that refrigerator, or we can't survive. We need it. We can't because we can't go into the woods and collect wood and make our fire. People that live in cities, that's impossible. And, and and the air would be so choked with smoke if everybody had their own cooking fire. And it is in places in the world where that's the case. 
And not only that, but you, you, as you look out from your house, you have to go further and further for your firewood, and the hills are beginning to look like, uh, uh, you know, like, like total barren deserts, like the surface of Mars. And, and uh, this is a really serious thing. And I, I would just, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking, God, what we really need is a plague of sterility. It would be the gentlest, <laughs> the gentlest answer. Yeah. yeah. Because at least those of us who are here could live out our lives. And, of course, there's always some uh, people that aren't susceptible to any kind of plague, and that would be the, the future generations, and basically the race would be freshened and get a chance. You know, it's, we're at the point where there's so many people, we have to have this crazy system, which is eating the earth for breakfast and is unsustainable just to keep the people that are here now alive. Mm. Well, we so have, uh, we're, we've got to hit a wall, and well, and uh, so if we can't get along and solve our basic problems on how to run an economy and educate people, uh, how the heck are we going to face this one if we're in denial about the fact that it's even happening? Well, we have, and that we, we have, caused uh, it. we have the new, the next installment of the movie Blade Runner, which was a <laughs> Philip K. Dick inspired. <laughs> Uh, novella which addresses exactly that it addresses that humanity has kind of wiped itself out yeah yeah and then uh you know um i i i personally i think it's a i think it's i i personally think it's a, a problem of economics i really do mm. i mean yeah, tribalism yeah, we and don't economics need, we don't need the growth system we didn't you know the the, the we need to live in an example that I'll give about that is, is uh, in the uh, Middle Ages, you had the Black Death. Sure. And uh, so many people uh, were dead that they couldn't find people to do any work. Right. Right. And so people said, well, I'll work, but you've got to pay me. So it, 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 it wiped out serfdom. Right, yeah. The old feudal... Uh... Yeah, right. But still... It wasn't a growth model. Uh, they could go for 200 years without much change right. in the landscape. Right. Uh, you know, okay, we, now we have all these marvelous, uh, we, you know, we, come on, we love our, our friends, our family. We don't want anybody to die prematurely. You know, we want to live out a good, have a good life. So uh, we, we all are in favor of the wonders of modern medicine, but we're not doing anything on the other end yeah. to prevent too many people. You know, we're sitting in gridlock and traffic. Well, we got to build big highways. We got to add that that extra bridge to, to Vancouver. We yeah. we've got uh, you know, and and um, what what value is any of that? I mean, where does it end? Uh, so. We've got to deal with it. I, we got to start talking about it. Right. I I, I got to interject a little a little uh, a black yeah. a black death moment this morning on coffee <laughs> with curmudgeons, and it, I it, this is like Jason Allen's. Did you know the, uh, So a little sidetrack, folks. During the Black Death, right? You think about all that. Uh, that is where the old child song and plaything of "Ring Around the Rosie" came from. I bet you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's right. Ring around the rosy, pockets full of posy, ashes to ashes we fall, fall down. And that was yeah, act, that was actually yeah. stemmed th from the Black Death. The kids would play that. Ash, That's you know, right. You know, because they believed the flowers, you know, uh, and posies. If you carried them with you, they would help you uh, stave off the, uh, of course, what they called back then bad humors. You know, and uh, right, yeah, right. of course, you yeah, burn the bodies, ashes to ashes we all fall down. I mean, what a third, a third yeah. of thirty four, thirty five percent of Europe. Uh, oh, man, it was, yeah. Just, uh... It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. It depopulated the countryside and the cities. Right. And then, pe then people uh, continued to go to cities because it was where the action was, you know? Right. It, it was the place to, 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 to find work and employment and, and, and you know, you, you, farming is tiresome. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're not doing it for yourself. Right. Hey, Ed, I want you to put on your uh, prognosticator's cap for a minute. All right. And um, tell, tell me, 
and and this is maybe kind of a uh, such a vague and va- you know vacuous sort of uh, question that maybe it's more a rhetorical answer than a specific you know. But wh- where do you over the next let's say three three to five years? Where do you see us going? Whoa! I mean, because we seem to be at such a kind of. Uh, a uh, crux kind of moment in history, almost, and and, and I I can you know it, it to me it's it's kind of tangible. I can feel it that we we are in a time of certain uh, crossroads. Uh, I mean we yeah. did, we were at it uh, you know like you said in 1860 we, we you know we we were at that crossroads we, and again in uh, I I would say people people say 68 but I I tend to think it was around 66. And especially after okay. after Kennedy was assassinated, you know, when uh, right when the yeah, America's sure. innocence was kind of you know lost in the shuffle. But where do you see us in three to five years? I mean, especially with someone as polarizing as Trump and his administration is, uh, I, I I don't know. That's one of the few times when people ask me. I I don't have man. I don't have any answer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't know too many people who do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm saying that rhetorically because yeah. really, do we know anybody who does? Right. Uh, Yogananda predicted that there would be palm trees growing in Boston back in the 1950s. Uh, so there were people that could see some of the changes that were coming on. Um uh, uh, Rolling Thunder, the Native American medicine man, uh, he, uh, he 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 said back in the uh, '60s that uh, the Earth was going to uh, get a fever to mm. throw off her disease. Mm. Um, you know, um, I I see positive things that uh, as as possible that that uh, some of these. Uh, the, the weight of, of the problems that it seem to be coming from every direction, economic, ecological, yeah. uh, f- financial, there's just so many that, that the, you know, you, 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 the, 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 the reefs that are dying, the, the forests that are beetle infestations, the, yeah. uh, the species that, you know, there was a... Uh, all of well, anyway, all of this is, um, I think, putting us in a place where maybe, uh, instead of of collapsing behind it under its weight, we we take courage and uh, and do the right thing. Right. Uh, I think of all the uh, the healthy cells in the living body. These are people that that get it whatever you define it as and Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of variety and a lot of space for for uh for different opinions on on what that is and still have it work because if everybody does what they love and come from a place of love rather than fear it Mm. will be a better future yeah i I, some of us and some of us can see that and know that it's possible so that's why i can't rule it out right and and I look at the next generation, uh, and I, I take a little bit. Of, now maybe I'm just a cockeyed optimist. Maybe I'm always looking for the you know the you know the silver lining in the in in the uh, complete crap show. But uh, I kind of take solace in the millennials a little bit. Maybe maybe I'm wrong in, in naive in this, but I look to their the way their uh, values are being. Uh, openly um shared and you you, you see that uh they're all not impressed with what we're doing and they have a, a, you know and i see some good core uh, what i you know the core convictions behind it that yeah. i yeah. I, I, I don't, i'm thinking this is an obtuse yeah uh it's coming from another side uh that's that sounds almost off the subject but it really is kind of illustrates something mm-hmm. uh it was will smith the actor who who, who who said that racism isn't new it's just being photographed <laughs> and, right and yeah that's positive yeah yeah well, because I, because things are we're, people that normally had never discussed it even before are aware of it now and it's hard to deny 
mm-hmm. uh, even though it's been around forever. So they're coming to terms with it and learning to, to accept the fact and realize the fact that uh, we might have uh, different skin or different facial features and different colors, but we're all human. Mm. And watching this Vietnam series, yeah, uh, again, yeah. You, you hearing that was really, I think, the greatest part of this achievement uh, of that series was getting the other side's point of view. Right. And it was so much like ours. You feel their pain. Right. And when, when they were talking, especially with the interviews with... Uh, People who were former Viet Cong and former Northern, you know, uh, Northern uh, Vietnamese Army and stuff. Uh, the 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 really cool thing about it is we always grew up to believe that you know almost like a dehumanization of it. I mean, they're 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 bad and, and they just want to kill us all and you know the communism sort of you know sort of ethos of all that. And uh, the, the you see these people talking and you realize, man, they they are. They're just like me, you know. They had hopes and fears, uh, even though they, you know, kind of believed dogmatically in a different system. Uh, they still sure. felt the tragedy of war, you know, loved ones never coming home again. Uh, and I, I, what, what really kind of brought home to me was the constant theme of, yeah, there, we we had communism, but we just wanted to reunite our country. We wanted our country. Yeah. That's right, and that was that's yeah. where it began. And and he, in the early part of the series, it, yeah. it points out uh, where Ho Chi Minh was uh, uh, just just wanted. He he went to the communists because he found support. There. Yeah, America spurned him. Uh, right. He reached out to us after World War II, and we had promised that we would stand behind their. Uh, attempt to achieve independence from France, and right. then we wound up supporting the French. Uh, oh, you know, it just uh, the country has a has a history of doing the wrong thing. Oh <laughs> yeah, a lot of there's an awful lot of that, and and yeah. uh, it's, it's it's very unnerving. You know, I I always Ed, I always think what history would be like today if only someone would have listened to Ho Chi Minh. And then also, if someone would have given Fidel Castro a baseball contract <laughs> back in the fifties. You know, uh, when, yeah, when he yeah, was that young, sure, young, uh, pit, sure. you know, and, young and, pitcher. You know, to me, it seems obvious that if you keep, if if you don't like like these these sanctions and things like that, uh, like they're doing now with North Korea. Yeah. You know, do do you really think that works? Uh, to me, what works best is when you just say, okay, well, here's some candy and donuts. I'm willing to share them with you if you if you you know you want. And and just make your uh, your economy and your your education and uh, your, your 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 culture available to the other side, mm-hmm. and you're going to suck them in. Uh, you know, I'm thinking before 9/11, uh, and even right after 9/11, Arab kids were were dancing to to Michael Jackson. They they had. Uh, uh, you know, they they had uh, uh, Michael Jackson T-shirts. Uh, yeah. They they uh, uh, the, the 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 navies of the world were, were throwing out banners. We're with you, USA. And again, you know, we made the stupidest, the wrongest, the, the most outrageous choice. And it's like w- these people have no sense of history. Uh, you know, he instead he put our proverbial body part in a uh, in a hornet's nest of people who don't remember things in sound bites but in hundreds of years yeah and they carry grudges and it's part of their culture uh you know you don't mess with that and now we have to deal with that it's like yeah i enough already and now <laughs> we've got a guy who you know, i'm sorry you know uh, uh. i understand why pe- some people voted some of my friends voted for him mm. But he's exactly the wrong thing we need right now. Right. So another side of it, to balance the optimist, is that the realist in me is saying, how can things get better? You know, uh, you look at history. And I think of, of uh, I read a really good uh, book, because I was always fascinated by this. Why did the French fall to the Germans in World War II? What, hmm. 
wanted. They had the, they had the biggest army in Europe. They had the best, most, most up-to-date planes and tanks. They had a bigger navy. And they still lost. Right. And it was because of polarity and factionalism. Heart they versus, could yeah. not. They they could not get it together to come together to to resist even the Nazis from taking over their country. That's yeah. how polarized they were, and that's how dangerous it is for us to be that way now. Right. Uh, in uh, before I move on to another topic, because there's a question I want to ask you. It's kind of intriguing to me. Um, but uh, people, uh, I know a lot of friends and stuff. They ask after, especially right after the election, what do you make of it? You know this and that. And and the, after some reflection and thought, uh, the best thing I can say was to them, and I, I don't know if it made any sense to them, was heart beat the machine. And that is the fact that the the, the Trump people believed it. They, they the the a lot of the people that believed in him it's a it's a the make America great crowds with the red hats and everything I mean you mock all you want but while we had the m- machine part of getting trying to get people to vote and get out there we we didn't believe in our candidate enough uh, and, and whether it was due to polarization of her character or, or whatever whatever uh, I, I I thought that, that in this case the reason why was heartbeat the machine whether I agree because I don't agree with Trump at all I mean I'm uh, some you know I'm, I'm probably 99.9999 percent not you know not a tr- not a Trump dude at all but uh, sure. but I just want to throw throw that it has has nothing to do with nothing but let, let's get to the question I wanted to ask you I wanted to ask you the last time you were on the show a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, it's been a couple of years, hasn't it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, especially with the time travel book, if a if a 2017 Ed Devito could go back in time and run into his 1969 self, what is oh. the what is the one thing? And you're only allowed just one thing. What is the one thing you tell him? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I'm thinking I. My first thought was I'd give him a, a hug, you know, and it would it would it would last for about a day, <laughs> yeah. uh, because that kid was hurting. Yeah. There you go. Uh, you know, I I I tell him just uh, you know, that I you know it, it would depend how much time we 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 were I could be there. Uh, I I could have used a mentor. Hmm. You know, and and that's one of the things that I like so much about Colonel Bat. You know, because yeah. he, he really he really came from a, a good place. Even though he was a Southern racist, you know, he, he, what, we we had a we had a um, uh, when I I did a conservation program in Virginia in 1990, and I asked Colonel Bat to do a, a tour. Uh, I mean, a, uh, a a talk for us because. He, I mean, this guy, like I said, he was in company of mil- military historians. He, he fired the the gun over the James River at the centennial of the Civil War in in, in 1961, mm. and that that's a big deal. Yeah. When he uh, when his daughter got married, they opened a church that had been closed for a hundred years. It's the oldest church in the state of Virginia. The governor was there and everything. Wow. So I wanted this guy to do a talk for uh, for my crew, and he asked me. He says, "No, I'm on the black. Are they?" <laughs> and and I thought my first thought was you know I wanted to say you son of a bitch <laughs> yeah but I didn't you know I I said this guy is is another time he comes out of a different reality mm. and you know it, it's not quite when in Rome do as the Romans do but it's something like that it's it's um, it was just like uh, no I said you know I just I just He's an old man at this point. I mean, what's the point in trying to change that? And what hill do I want to die on? <laughs> right. What battle do I want to choose? You know, and yeah. and which, which which so, and he gave a beautiful talk. He he told he 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 totally backed up, well researched because he's a Virginian through and through. He gave he gives a talk about uh, the speech that that. Um, uh, Oh God! I'm, I can't believe I'm spacing his name. Um, give me liberty or give me death. That oh, oh, give me liberty. Was that Nathan Hale? No, that's the Nathan, he, was it? No, not Nathan Hale. Patrick was, Henry. 
Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. Yeah. yeah. Now Patrick yeah. Henry was a lawyer in Virginia, mm. and uh, so he. This is a, a speech that he said he could. He said he could have said words like that, but but he didn't. Mm. He was uh, the the where that speech took place. The colonel did research in it, and he got into the archives of the church where uh, it, it began. He says the the minister of the church is the 1870s. He says there's no record whatsoever. He said yes, that meeting took place, but Patrick Henry wasn't there because two or three people that were wrote it down, <laughs> yeah. and there's no mention of him having been there. Yeah. And he was so convincing that, that all these kids that, so, I mean, this total maxim in our American myth, uh, where Patrick Henry stands up, and I know not what others may say, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Right. He, w he never was, he, it never happened. Yeah. And the colonel proved that, as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Uh, so uh, it was worth it. Yeah. I want to throw a quick Nathan Hale. I, I referenced Nathan Hale. Nathan Hale, his quote was, uh, "You know, I regret only have one life to give for my country." There, it's it's early in the morning. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Oh, I said the Nathan Hale when I referenced it, and I was wrong. Uh, Nathan Hale was the guy that said, "You know, I I, I regret I only have That's one right. life to give for my yeah, country." Yeah, he was so. the young the young fellow. I think he was only 18 years old or so, 18, 19. Uh, I'm so I'm, I'm fact checking myself, you know, like thinking, yeah, that wasn't right. Well, it was Patrick Henry. Would give me liberty, give right. me death. Yeah. So. I, I can't. Uh, That's okay. You're we, just breaking up. But sometimes you, you're clear. I don't know. Some kind of connection there. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You, you are uh, coming through like crystal clear. Ah. Uh, and, um, but, uh, and you know, I the cool thing is I could sit down and yak at you, yak with you for hours because, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so much. Yeah, we, we, maybe we'll just have to pick up again sometime, huh? Right. There you go. Um, before and, we, and I'd, I'd like to, we need to get together. Go ahead. What's that? Go oh, ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say before before we let you go, I just I, I have to know: Are you working on the third book? Uh, I started it last summer. Well, I didn't start it last summer, but I, I got back into it, and then, um, in fact, it was actually it wasn't last summer. It was two. Maybe a year or two ago, because I got in, I got really involved in getting our car club in, uh, behind the uh, centennial celebration of the historic Columbia River Highway. Right. And I was yeah. going to meetings, and it was just so much time. Plus, I was president of the club, and uh, I just didn't, you know, something had to give. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll come back to it. Yeah. Um, then I started getting some different thoughts about. You know, oh, maybe I could be doing it this way or doing it. And, you know, it just, so I think so. I think, you know, with enough, um, uh, like, the kind of just having people like yourself saying, you, you know, you're working on a third book, it <laughs> yeah. might be what it takes. Yeah, but uh, I, after, you you know, you're out of the habit mm. for, for a few months, it begins to, be, you know, become less, it's not as hot of an iron on the fire. Sure. So um, my, my, my feeling is that what I really need to do is um, the book is, is, I think, a worthy one. Uh, it, it, uh, it's just lost in the sea of, of publications these days. It needs some advertising. It needs some right. chain rattling. Right. Uh, to, to, and I'd love to set it up for um, uh, the 50th anniversary of Woodstock that's coming up in, in 19. Wow! Yeah, uh, it, it could be poised to, to to do something there and and have something to contribute to that whole discussion, and I um, so I think if if there was movement in that direction, yeah, I feel like obligated to finish it. Excellent. To, to, well, to if you do that, I, I just have one small favor, and that is uh, write me into the background somewhere. I I could be like the third guy from the left eating a donut. I don't I, I don't care. Oh, you know. Jason! Wow, that whole sentence is gone. Like, could you? Could, oh, sure. Try again. Oh, I was gonna say that if, uh, if when you start writing the third book, um, my small favor is if you could write me into it. I said I don't care. Uh -huh. I don't care if I'm like okay. the. Th yeah, I don't care if I'm the th <laughs> the third I guy. Uh, I heard that. Right. right, you're into it, right? You said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I. You know. I <laughs> That's don't. Funny. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. That, I, you know. I. I 
I've written some people into it um, in in previous books. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, I'm, if I'm in the background and I'm just, like, off to the left eating a donut, it's all good, you know? We need, we need to get together and discuss that because right. there would be an aspect <laughs> of that that might, you know, where if you're in it, you'd want to be in it a certain way. Sure, sure. Uh, so, um, you know, where it would really add to the story. So let's think about that. Excellent. And it was great uh, talking to you this morning. Um, I had fun, yeah. Uh, right. I, a lot to think, a lot to think about, and a lot to. Uh, but we're definitely gonna have to do this again sometime, especially as in uh, the crossroads of time we are in now. Um, but it it was great. Thank you so much uh, for calling in. Thanks, thank you, Jason. And uh, it's fantastic stuff. So uh, we will uh, we will uh, yak at you soon. All right, great, great. Well, thanks again for this opportunity to uh, you know to chat with your audience and. And uh, with your, yourself, and you know, let's Excellent. do it. All right, thank you very much, man. You have a good one, my man. You too. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was author Ed Devito, of course, of uh, the two books, The Woodstock Paradox and The Woodstock Paradigm. You can get on Amazon right now and just uh, write in Woodstock Paradox, and boop, it'll pop up there, and go ahead and order it. And uh, you will not be disappointed. Both of them are very fine books. And uh, I'm going to hold him to it. He, he is going to write me in there in the third book. I want to be, you know, just some background character, you know, maybe. But give me hair. That's the only That's the only thing I want. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Uh, okay, I'll be the bald guy. You know, yeah. just kind of. So, uh, Doc. So, that yeah, they, we got it. We, we put that up on Amazon. Yeah. <sighs> A while ago, so yeah, that was uh, there's a lot to uh, chew on there. <laughs> yeah. Not worried, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. coming from okay. Yeah, I don't know what was up with the connection, it, it was definitely something on the other end there because we could we could hear him loud and clear, crystal. Yeah, it sounded crystal like uh, clear. Yeah, it, it sounded like uh, he was uh, uh, yeah, he, there yeah. was a lot of uh, boy. Mm. There's a lot to chew on there. There is, yeah. It was interesting about the story about the the colonel, or was it the the mm, yeah the, the guy? Now remember that he said that took place in what the early '60s. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And I think today you can't, you know. Mm. My point is you can't go there anymore. I mean, as well you shouldn't. I right. Mean, you shouldn't. Right. <laughs> right. There's no one that you know. I mean, could you imagine? Today, even an old person. I mean, well, you know, you have that thing where you have the uncle or whatever. Yeah. And they say something like yeah. racist or whatever, and you're like, oh, well. I think sometimes that that I mean, uh, has been transferred over to how people view immigration. Yes, you're right. You know, yeah. you're right. Yes, yeah. I, I actually, uh, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. I know, early in the morning, too. I know. Oh, wow. Well, oh, well, you're I, on top of it. I get an extra cookie. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I came in here in my usual <laughs> happy go lucky right. self. Right. You, you came in, right? <laughs> and, and when I walked in, you looked at me right in the eye and you said, You know, today is a funky, fresh Friday. <laughs> and I said, Man, I'm all no. over this. Yeah. Uh, I was just in my typical bad mood, but that's okay. <laughs> and for some reason, the, the, my my cycles are all off, right? So I mm. need to, I need to uh, hit the reset change, button. Maybe we should change it to Tuesdays and Thursdays. And <laughs> right. be like, hey, everybody, you know, hey, I'm happy like, Sunday afternoon. Hey, exactly. Yeah. Welcome to Comedy No, it won't. It'll just it'll just shift. But anyway, <laughs> we'd have to call our show like the Last Weekend. You yeah. know, I was like, well, I'm uh, thinking about it. So you yeah. you you you. you uh, you read the Woodstock. I read both books. Yeah, 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 yeah. And There's it's kind of so it's kind of uh, sci-fi, kind of ish, because someone who goes back, and kind of, but time. it it's it's a, it's it's complex because he throws a lot of uh, uh, macro metaphors at it, and yet like, uh, and it's very character driven. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he he has done a superb job as an author of fleshing out those characters to where. Uh, uh, each character uh, has not not only the uh, singularness of it, but also they each. I, I found that each character posed different questions because of their outlooks, mm -hmm. and it was just a, and that that and the fact that man he he's one of those rare guys that can make you feel like you're standing on the corner of Hate and Ashbury back in in you know the summer of love uh, down in you know sixty seven and sixty nine. 
and feel for a moment, just for a moment, what what it was, what it must have been like to have been there and yeah. breathe that air and be around that sort of kinetic atmosphere. You know? and, and with all these so. uh, with all these uh, anniversaries that are happening, so we got two years. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. Twenty nineteen August I, I, will be fifty. Years. That blew me away. Fifty years. Fifty year anniversary of Woodstock. Mostly, I was born in sixty nine. So well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, mm. good luck with that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, it'll be fifty years for Woodstock. Yeah. I mean, we're starting here in sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine. So we're hitting all the fifty year right. anniversaries of right. Very true. Everything sixty. Well, next year will be like you talked about. Assassinations. 68, yeah. Yeah, not a lot happened in 68. No. 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 Demo- Democratic National Convention yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, be, and... be, we'll be looking ah. back in 50 years. It was interesting. I mean, I... I uh, he... Uh, well, touching on the, the Woodstock mm-hmm. stuff, um, I told you before, I was going to bring this up before, before I, I, I do anything, because we had mentioned this before. Mm-hmm. And um, I told you because you you said you wanted to be written in. This was your yeah. chance here. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, there's this? Uh, this was from Willamette Week uh, a month ago or or so. Okay. September first, actually. Uh, there's a new movie filming in Portland about Woodstock, and they need extras. Oh. They're also looking for vintage vehicles. And there's a a photograph here. Um, it's called Woodstock or Bust. Ooh. Uh, film, yeah, stars, right, yeah. film stars Willow Shields of Hunger Games and Meg DeLacy of The Fosters and is produced by Big Kid Films. Um, you can look this up and, and, and see uh, two play songwriters who want to debut their original music at Woodstock. And this is going to be something that's going to be going to happen filming in Portland. Um, so I had mentioned nice. that before. Nice. And... Uh, and I, I wanted to mention it since we were talking Woodstock. Right. So that's going to be a 20, 2018 film ske- scheduled for 2018. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a little IMDb, little photo there. Director Leslie Bloom. So if you if you go out and go yeah. do your extra casting. Right. I don't know. Right. I was like... I was thinking I could play some... I could play someone's John Bircher old... <laughs> Uncle or something. Sitting in the pew or a chair in a meeting hall, yeah. like crump, crump, crump. Maybe I can do a southern accent. Well, you gotta see these hippies. Tell you, tell you, Jason, these hippies. I don't know what we're gonna do. Right, like psst, so, doc, doc, doc. Yeah. What, what? Why are you dressed like Colonel Sanders, man? Yeah. Oh, jeez. You, you know, you know the <laughs> old. Be. You know, Look at the, the way the hair. Well, thinks, no, the, the white thinks, suit dude. and and the bolo kind of bolo tie or the tie or whatever. Great. You know, the southern drawl. I say, I say, I say. You know, great. I'm great. here at this Bon Jon Birch Society. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm Colonel Sanders, and I'm here with my cohort, Mister Clean. Hi. Um, Are your floors dirty? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that you mention it. Yeah. Just look at all I need is the little. Right, you need the little, the, little, uh, the soul patch sort of thing, you know. Yeah, I, I say, I say. Oh. But no, don't, isn't that the stereotype you always think Touching of though? Tattooed and spasses. The right. <laughs> give me that damn chicken. Yeah, especially with this, that eleven a, waves, eleven <laughs> waves and spasses. Yeah. yeah, this is an old. No, no, no. We we covered this in a whole episode. Harlan. Yes. Of Harlan Sanders. Harlan Sanders. Yeah. Uh, give me that. That ain't no gravy. Give me that gra- chicken. Give me that gravy. This is a callback. And try as you might, we 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 look like uh, uh, Colonel oh. Sanders and sound like a uh, Foghorn Leghorn. Ah, I say, I say. Well, it's just I told you I had read some autobiography <laughs> way back yeah. in a previous episode. Yeah, I came in with information and I right. read about Harlan Sanders, Colonel and his Harlan Sanders, tirades about the chicken. Right. Oh, damn, damn chicken. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we don't have to go there nah, again. Nah. Nah. Oh yeah, I, I don't know the the population thing uh, threw me for a loop. Mm. Yeah, and that it, was interesting. I, well, uh, I mean, 
it's uh, I can see that, and and a lot of people who, you know, people are like the climate change. I mean, it, it wasn't uh, 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 wasn't a a bad argument. It was kind of like, oh yeah, good point. No. <laughs> but when you bring up the Middle Ages and the plague, and it's 2017, and you're like, hmm, that's not a good look. <laughs> you're not painting a good picture. Yeah, I know. I well, know. and the thing is, is uh, you know, you can talk about that in America, mm. but we're not. We're not really that densely populated as compared to Asia, right. well, it, for it, example. Right. Well, it you feels know. that way because uh, we have laid out a, a large number of green spots, which is, which is yeah. so thank you, Teddy Roosevelt and John Muir. And well, they'll be going away soon. They'll, yeah, because they'll be privately owned and uh-huh. it'll be you know brought to you by. But uh, you know, we just become a densely populated in in a rural sort, of, uh, you know, ur- yeah. uh, uh, urban sort of setting, and uh, you can f- kind of fool yourself to think but, that oh my gosh, we're all crammed in here like mice. And but as he was saying yeah. that, I was looking at the news, and there was some stampede in uh, oh yeah, where was it? Was it Bangladesh or somewhere? I mean, you know, yeah. and you're kind of like, Ooh, you know, of course, it's an interesting discussion to have considering that we're the 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 weather is trying to wipe some of us out right yeah. already you know right like the island of Puerto Rico which, oh. oh my gosh I can't even yeah the more and more I read because you know after uh, there was kind of almost like a blackout almost because you know no electricity well, there, was a and there was there was no lo- electricity well there's still, right all. still is but I mean the media I mean there was only a few people on the ground there that could get out. And so you got a very kind of um, uh, underrepresented glimpse of what was really going on. And now that now that uh, they they're starting to, and more people have arrived there, uh, it, it just it, it, I tell you the whole scene it, it bums me out uh-huh. because it it is uh, so uh, uh, horrendous there that uh, it's hard to kind of put in words almost to describe it. Uh, so folks, you know, if you want to, uh, if you feel like you want to volunteer or you want to, uh, donate, uh, American Red Cross has a site, go ahead. I mean, there, you can Google it, uh, and all sorts of uh, NGOs and, and whatever are there trying to help in the, uh, the blighted now island of, uh, Puerto Rico and they, they need all the help that they can get. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. But the big news. Yeah. Good news is yeah, it's National Coffee Day. Wow, it is it's it's National Coffee me. Day, and you have your Trader Joe's dark roast no, now, do. don't you? I do, but I think you can get a free coffee. Ooh, like I, I think this is the day. <laughs> See now, the people are going to go. I remember going to the Dutch Brothers once and getting a free. That's right, National Coffee. That's right. So now everybody's going to go to the Dutch Brothers. Hey, where's my free coffee? There's like, who's sending these people over for free coffee? Right? It's Doc. You yeah. know, we're, we're on streaming Tell live. Doc sent you. you know, you could go to your nearest. You know, da, 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 da. <laughs> it's located at one five. Da, 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 yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, there's lines like damn you, Cremagens. You know. Yeah. Don't Colonel Doc Sanders sent you. <laughs> Like a free coffee. I don't know. He talked like a southern gentleman, and he just kept going on about chickens. But I, I you know, he said there was free coffee. Well, there's free coffee uh, at, at my gas station if you fill oh, it up. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Free coffee oh. with the fill. Mm. Talk about you know. Let me ask you a question because I'm I'm not much of a coffee person, mm-hmm. so I I can only really um, observe stuff from the outside. Outside, I need an insider's view. Okay. Is is there a lot of, uh, when we were talking about like earlier when Ed was, you know, here, uh, is there a lot of coffee tribalism? Because I know there's some people, man, they refuse. Um, I only get Starbucks or I only get Black Rock or I only get Dutch Brothers. And, uh, you know, other, you know, never the twain shall meet, you know. Uh, just wondering, as as an inside coffee guy, is there this, uh, is there these different factions, you know, the tribalism in coffee, or do people, you know, whatever the place is, they'll just pull over and get it no matter what brand it is? Yeah, well, yes and no. I okay. mean, there are people who, there, there was some, well, in Portland, mm. there was some coffee tribalism. Yeah. And, it, like, 
and I, love well, I'm not fried. sure what the inside scoop is, yeah. but there was some, uh, I'm not going to say the brand, but it's a well-known Portland, Oregon brand. No, it's not Jim and Patty. Right. And it's not the Starbucks. Right. And that's not even Portland anyway. That's Seattle. But, um, and and uh, people started going, oh, this coffee's not as good as they say it is and stuff. And I, I kind of was like, oh, I'm not, I, I don't, you yeah. know, I've got enough things to argue about. <laughs> Right, coffee. Not argue yeah. coffee. Right. I just know what well, I like. What if someone besmirches the good name of Trader Joe's Dark Roast Coffee? Well, Are you tell me that's not going to light you up a little bit? Hit them with this ah. substantial mug. Right. Well, I mean, I, it, it, here's the thing about coffee. I mean, it's a coffee gets its taste from the roast. Mm. I mean, you know, a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's there's kind of different kinds of, uh, you know, kind of tart versus smooth and full-bodied. Yeah. I like smooth and full-bodied. Smooth. Yeah. And, and then, but there's kind of more of a, like a tart. It almost tastes burnt to me sometimes. Mm. Now, I kind of had some like that the, the other day. But at the time, yeah, dude, if you got to drink coffee in the afternoon, you're drinking coffee. That's dang good coffee, boy. I'm gonna, you're, you're Dougie Jones. You're just like, <laughs> you know, you're doing a Dougie Jones. You get the facial tick maybe a little yeah, bit. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I had, I have a great picture, but it's on my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at a brew. I was having a meeting at a brew. Pub, a big kind of famous one of those meetings. Yeah, downtown. Thing. Yeah. Well, no, it was it was downtown, <laughs> and uh, it was like, well, you could have beer. I, I had to have some lunch. I hadn't eaten all day, right? It was the one thing I ate all day, mm. and uh, um, and so it was like you could have beer, you could have something, and it's like we're both like, oh, it's kind of the afternoon, and got things to do, and got to stay awake, got places to see it. It was like, yeah. do you have coffee? And they brewed. Like a whole cup of coffee, but the the, mm. the 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 coffee mugs. I gotta post this on Facebook. Okay. Uh, uh, they 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 said I gotta find it here. Now now keep in mind this is at a brewery, right? Mm. Okay. Or a, a brew brew place. Yeah. Where they have the beer, they're known for their beer. So when you get coffee, they got these mugs, which of course I can't find right now. <laughs> oh oh, that's good. Because they were right here. <laughs> Don't you love yeah. it when... Okay. Do you, when you get on your phone, right? hmm And you look for something, you go, I know, I just... Oh, here it is. I'm just... All I'm, the time. I'm All just, the time. Because I'm a moron. I'll think back. And, oh, it's just right there. And it's but anyway, over there, yeah. the coffee mug says... On the side, it says... You can't see it. It says, wish this was beer. <laughs> Like printed on the side of the yeah. coffee mug. Yeah. It's like yeah. wish in big bold letters, wish this was beer. I thought that was cute. Right. Yeah. I, I laughed when the guy was like, Oh, look at these mugs. I love this. Anyway. So yeah. that was the highlight of my week. Everything else was terrible. No. <laughs> uh-huh. Um Hugh Hefner gave Hunter S. Thompson's widow twenty five thousand dollars after her husband's death left accounts frozen. All right. Oh wow. Didn't know that. We we had that. You. We had that obituary yesterday, and I half, yeah. we don't have to talk a lot about it. And yeah. I knew that there would be backlash and whatnot. There's been a lot of insider stuff. Half was kind of, but again, yeah. uh, I think that that plays into what Ed was talking about. Uh, uh, the times. Yes. You know what the times were going. On. I mean, he was talking about. Gosh, I mean, this guy, the South, yeah. the John Birch Society. Yeah. Religion and all of it. Yeah, I mean that's a heck of a time to. That's a heck of an indoctrination to wake up one day and go, "What am I doing?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. I mean the, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I tell you, I. Uh... I mean that that was the same environment that Playboy. That gave rise to right things like Playboy and, and we, this highly bef- conservative religious Mad, Mad Men. But what, exactly. You know, the suit, like exactly. we were talking about before the show, you mentioned Mad Men. You're yeah. right, you're right. The uh, the uh, 50s, 60s, uh, urbane, young, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, so I get the, I get the um, you know, I, I did read 
some some articles, you know, uh, that was a backlash, you know, from a feminist. And 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 yeah, uh, it's 2017. You know, yeah. it's like I was like, I'm I'm waiting to see these. Oh, here 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 they are. You know, and I read them actually, and yeah. they made good points. But at the same time, you put yourself in the context of history mm-hmm. when Hugh did his thing yeah. and brought up this publication, Playboy, and all that. Sure. And the, the same thing is, you know, people go out and they watch the Mad Men TV show and they're like, oh, Mad Men, you know, this is interesting. It's like, well, where do you think that came from? Mm-hmm. That's, that, mm-hmm. that, that is a, a drama that was actually very well done yeah. and taken from the history of that time period. Right, Which right. was not exactly this, this feminist, you know. I mean, Playboy was seen as as somewhat feminist, believe it or not, you know. Sure. But, but then it wasn't that it was Gloria Steinem and she, you know. Exploitation. She and, went yeah. and did the bunny thing at the Playboy Club and then wrote a book about it. And that kind of launched Gloria Steinem's career. And I think they actually mm-hmm. ended up um, uh, publish, pu- publishing her stuff in, in Playboy. Mm. You know, so I I don't know. But it was this, yeah. it was... It came out of the sexual revolution, sure. Mainly because of the uh, birth control pill uh, that had come come out. Yeah, uh, that women would take, not a male birth control, <laughs> a female birth control. I, I tried it, like didn't work, yeah. man. Well, there yeah. is there is actually a male birth control pill now. But obviously, you can see how successful it is, right? Yeah, I always, yeah. I always thought uh, the mayor, the uh, male birth control pill. I always thought it was the Home Shopping Network. Mm. I mean, nothing, nothing, uh, you know, turn on there, and nothing uh, get your minds on. Uh, on. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what. Think about baseball. Yeah, yeah, that's. It. But it, but that was kind of how all yeah. of that kind of came out, like in the. Late fifties, they're Masters and Johnson. Yeah, their yeah. sexuality research, which I believe was the, Madison. The book Wisconsin. "Joy of Sex" was uh, what early sixties. Uh, was it later? I want to say it was late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, yeah. Fear of flying was one another one. That's an mm. interesting story. Uh, but uh, all of this stuff, uh, I mean, but, but, but the research, like Masters and Johnson research and all that, uh, had come out. So all this, this stuff was coming out in the in the you know in the rolling out in the fifties and the sixties. Mm-hmm. America was back from World War Two and highly successful. You know, coming yeah. out of the Eisenhower years, sure. Uh, our our industrial, you know, we we are urban and industrial now. Uh, kitchen appliances yeah. were, the, were all the rage. The yeah. Cold War was hot. Uh, of course, we had Korea and stuff in the fifties. Yeah. Uh, Vietnam unfolding. Uh, the greatest generation, the kids of the greatest generation, the baby boomers, yeah. were coming in the sixties, leading to w- Woodstock. Right. Kids listening to rock and roll, running around naked in the mud. You know, I mean, they, and all yeah. of this stuff, all of this stuff. Yeah, was totally against what he what Ed was talking about. Sure, the conservative, greatest generation, America, Christian, yep. go to church, yep. uh, morality, Jack Webb crew stuff. cut, exactly. all American, Lawn mom order. apple pie and Chevrolet. Yeah, man. you think you yeah. think things are conservative now? Yeah, that yeah. was and, inst- and institutionalized racism. Sure. You know, this is this is where you get to the late six. You know, you have the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King. Because in the South, it's still you use this bathroom, we use this mm-hmm. bathroom. You sit in these seats in the back of the bus. I right. mean, Rosa Parks and all this stuff. Yeah. All that was happening. Yeah, and um, and so so this this is the environment that that Playboy kind of. Spilled out into, into sure. and, and here's the thing, Jason. I, mm. I think, I think, if not Hugh Hefner, yeah, someone else. Oh, it yeah. would have been some. There would have been, you know, yeah, a play bachelor or something, or or just in 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 the alternate universe reality, yeah, in that that eleven dimensions of 
string theory reality. Well, I, I, I agree. Someone it was else would have come Hugh along. Hugh Hefner. In fact, there they play a Bachelor or something or whatever. Right. You know. In fact, uh, there were people that had those type of magazines, but they were never at a national <laughs> level where Hefner took it. Oh well. And yeah, there it was, was more of on, on the down low the sort of right. Yeah, the underground, underground pornography. Yeah. In fact, mm-hmm. speaking of which, okay. I mean, all of that was illegal. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah. the stag films and all that. Yeah, you're hiding illegal. down in the basement with your buddies. Yeah, because you get busted. Uh, yeah. You know? Some meeting of the loyal order of uh, water buffaloes. Right, and, but you get yeah. busted. Yeah. If somebody, you know, you could get busted for that. Yeah. Go to jail. And so this this is the environment that, that Hefner and his Playboy stuff came out. And then it was, you know, kind of, I don't know, liberal... It was it was it was geared toward the successful, the economically successful bachelor, yeah. white, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, this kind of the whole Mad Men, yeah, whole yeah. Mad Men world, the young men about town. So, yeah. um, and then again, you had the whole sexual revolution, um, having yeah. you know, because remember, <laughs> again, in conservative America. The sex was for procreation. The kids, yeah, making the kids, right? Mm-hmm. There wasn't, there wasn't. Uh, I mean, you know, an American yeah. society did not discuss no uh, pleasure centers or things oh, like that. I that mean, maybe is, you know. that is so European, yeah, in America though. I mean, and then later, I mean, I think, I think the America. other thing to think about is yeah. that. These kind of things, and I, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure when the magazine was started. We can check it, but mm. you you had things like Cosmopolitan and other right other yeah, types yeah. of publications that that delved into maybe maybe from more of a, a, a female perspective, for example. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's what was going on, and and it's hard again with with Ed's. Uh, talk there, mm-hmm. it's hard to kind of like, okay, pull yourself in the context of this time period. Right, yeah. And, you know, and now I, I you know, <sighs> now we got Dr. Seuss, the hat and the cat. The oh, cat and the hat. I no, wasn't going to bring that up. No, I'm That's not going to, maybe I'll save that for Monday. It, it is in the news. There's, there, it's, it's hit the news. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, mostly it all comes from the research of this one professor, which I'm kind of like. I have an answer. Yes. Playboy, uh, Playboy uh, started out and was uh, December of 1953. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, it was that. It was that long ago. Yeah, hit newsstands in December of 1953. 1953. Wow. Yeah. And the cover girl was. I don't know. Marilyn Monroe. Come what? On. Wow. Come on. Wow. Famous. Yeah, yeah. She was the most iconic sure. woman of the time, so yeah. so it was Marilyn Monroe. Fifty three, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was the first good cover girl. There you go. Um Huge. Wow, I didn't you know, that's funny. It's like I it, it um I thought it was later in the fifties. I thought so too. I thought maybe it would be it like fifty five to fifty seven. Yeah, kind of the late fifties, you know? but But fifty three. Wow. Yeah. What a trendsetter old Hugh. Holy cow. Well, yeah. I mean... And then there's all kinds of, you know... I mean, you agree or disagree with the the, mora- the mor- you know, morality of it. Uh, but I'm just saying, December 53, yeah, it's a little earlier than I thought it was, but... Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was going to take a look here and see... Um, yeah, because there's famous pictures of... Yeah, there it is right there. I mean, we don't have to put it up, but... but the Gotcha. There's, uh-huh. I don't know if... You know, they're collector's items. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, there was that. So. And, um, yeah, and, and you know, uh, it was a couple of years ago mm-hmm. that they stopped, because his daughter took over the, the public she did. Uh, yeah. publication years ago, and it was a couple of years ago, you know, that they stopped putting nude photos in Playboy, only a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Like 2015, I want to say 20. I, I read that in the. I, I remember when it happened. People were like, "Well, this is a iconic moment." Um, but I, it's, you know, but, uh, authors are like writers like Hunter Thompson and people like that published in this in this magazine. So it was it was, you know, there's always like, "Oh, I only read it for the articles." Well, there was actually 
there was actually stuff to read in there too. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just checking out the headlines this morning. Yeah, to see what's going it's on. just like uh, the big one. Uh, the big top story right now is U.S. pulls more diplomats out of Cuba. Right. Uh, not uh, over those sonic attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, yeah, they're. Uh, yeah, I, I've been. I, I actually was reading about that, and I we have never discussed that. No. About uh, I did some research, and I had. I think I may have saved it about uh, sonic attacks. There is. Uh, there is research out there. You can do stuff. Yeah. To people, uh, one of the things that, um, and this this is just a weird story because they're not. I haven't looked into it lately, but there's just a, not a lot of information about the Cuban thing. No, there's not. They're kind of keeping kind of tight lipped about it. Yeah. Uh, I was watching a show, and I think it was on PBS. I think it was uh, Washington Week, mm-hmm. and it was it was a few months ago. And they were the one guy that was talking about it was surprised that uh, I guess after the attacks and the uh, the U.S. Uh, was us were generally perplexed about it. Yes, I guess uh, Cuba, you know, Raúl Castro kind of uh, uh, did almost uh, something that they would never believe in a million years. He did. He actually showed up and asked the Americans not only what's going on, but how can we help. Yeah, yeah. He seemed genuinely yeah, gen- okay. genuinely befuddled that this was going on. Yep. And he, you know, went went you know, went overboard saying that, you know, hey, we have obviously we have nothing to do with it. We don't have the technology to do something like that. But, you know, uh this is kind of weird and I want to get involved and help see well, if we can yeah. figure it out whatever. Yeah, they say and, that the uh, Cuban authorities, the Cuban government is 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 Cooperating with the FBI or whatever, yeah. and saying we 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 well, they're claiming we didn't do this, so yeah. no one. What is something happened? We don't know what. Um, it kind of the way it looks, the way it's described. These, I, if if you haven't heard about this, maybe you missed this. It's very mysterious. We've had yeah. diplomats. They've mm-hmm. said they've gone into a room or they've laid down on the bed and then yeah. felt nauseous and sick right and then uh maybe they felt better if they moved to a different place right that's kind of a little and running into key off uh, of, of maybe a sonic in nature right and running into uh um sort of uh not only the nausea but memory problems yes it was causing a lot of like uh uh you know, I wouldn't say brain damage per se. Well, they, but it's, it's that's been still sketchy. unforeseen, though, right? It's yeah. been sketchy. What yeah. I've read is like people that it's like maybe there's a little brain damage or something. Yeah, um, short term memory loss. Uh, I guess it. I guess the thing is, is it doesn't sound like. Um, I mean, it could be someone being drugged, but they're they're pointing the finger at some sort of other external. Yeah, I mean, with drugs, you know, you kind of have like a. Telltale signs or or right. forensic evidence that someone is drugged, and there has yeah. been a lot of research in the last ten years or so into like these sonic pulse yeah. uh, weapons, uh, ones that oh, won't, yeah. won't kill you, but in a battlefield you can make uh, uh, the enemy or whatever soldiers I, dis- disoriented. And uh, I looked at I. Watch the video from the companies <laughs> that did that. I did. Right. I went down the rabbit hole. Right. Here, here's the thing that that um, I gather from the Cuban situation on on my research mm-hmm. um, is that uh, in order to pull something like that off, yeah, you kind of have to. Uh, it, it's it's not something. It's not like a little you know Mission Impossible. Barney, get the little device out. Martin Landau. It takes a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. Because you're pushing Yeah. You know, sonic sonic waves are are, are pressure waves in mm-hmm. the air. And most uh it was interesting reading about this, a lot of researchers and scientists were like, Well, that's hard to do because it takes a lot of power to push that kind of power through the air. Think about the yeah. rock concert. That you go to, sure, and the ginormous bass woofers yeah. speakers that they have, yeah. and we've all been to the the concert where you can feel the bass oh, yeah. hitting your chest. Yeah. Well, uh, what 
you, you know, you, you, you're you not doing that with your little bookshelf speakers no. at home. You need, I, and of course, the room size is, is, means a lot there. But when you're at a big concert and a big, they've got gigantic yeah. speaker stacks to make that happen. Yeah, this stuff has to be what targeted and projected at a certain Yeah, and, and it's, there's a lot yeah. of power behind it. So they, for example, they give mm. examples of, of, of people, you know, Kids, as I would say, those darn kids and their loud darn music. Kids, yeah. Uh, who go to a rock concert and kind of stand in front of the woofer oh, yeah. in the big rock concert and they get sick and nauseous because the the, the power is the, the 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 pressure wave is going right yeah. through their bodies. And what it does is it it shakes you up. Yeah, it messes like, with the nervous yeah, system. We, we all and... Felt something like that. Sure. Where where um, where I felt it. I watched the Blue Angels once fly Ooh. very close by at, at an air show. Yeah. And they kick on the afterburners, like, right there. Yeah. And, you know, you, you think of, like, jets and stuff like yeah. that because there's so much pressure sure. coming out of the jet. You you feel it pounding in your chest. Mm. Um, so that can make you sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But air is not the greatest medium. Now, you no. go in the water... Ah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, now yeah. we're talking. You can you can send some pulse, some nasty pulse waves in the water, and they do. Um, yeah. You know, there's this whole thing about like they'll, they'll find uh, like whale on for like whales or porpoises and beached on right, the and, and the migration patterns changing because they're because getting they the heck out of dodge. Like, but there's yeah. like some sort of military. Yeah. Naval submarine things going on, high-powered sonar, or whatever. That there's actually been a lot of talk about that, mm -hmm. and its environmental impact. So anyway, so you yeah. need a lot of power, and uh, that's you know there's not they can't they're not finding like you know it's like where where you you'd have to find someone. That's, that's that's well. You'd almost have to find yeah. find uh, the uh, source of it in real time as yeah. it's happening because yeah. once it goes off, I mean, where are you gonna, right. you know? But it's it's pretty obvious. Like like I said, if you're doing it across the street or whatever, it's like what's that giant truck with that giant <laughs> woofer on it? You know, I mean, it's kind of yeah. not. It's a little more obvious. Yeah. Um, and you have to resonate. So what can happen? And this is with the research. Your, the way sound waves work. Everything can resonate. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything has a free. This this cup has a frequency. If we go in the lab and put this cup mm -hmm. down somewhere and we shoot it full of of sound pressure waves and we find its resonant frequency mm -hmm. and we turn up the pressure waves so far, we probably can shatter this cup. Yep, all we all know know about that, right? All matter and everything is energy, and yeah. it all, it all moves the old, at a different frequency. Old, we had the Memorex tape commercials. Yes. Is it live or, or is, is it Memorex? And it would be like a wine glass, and then it would shatter. The lady would, the, right. the opera singer would sing, and it would shatter. And then they'd put in the tape, and it would shatter. It was guy sitting in his chair, totally, his hair's all flown back, totally his false. ties all askew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your body has bones in mm -hmm. it to resonate. And usually they, they, they talk about, they, <laughs> the CIA has done research on resonating skulls <laughs> to Ooh. see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went down MK Ultra. Yeah, I went down mm. the path. Some deep. Well, I may not be back. Um, some, yeah. Deep, deep stuff. Expect a visit from the suits well, it's and the sunglasses. Wikipedia, come on. Yeah. It's out there. You can read about no, it, it is. but uh, DARPA's you know, talked about it. That's yeah, but of... you read the scientists, and they're all like, "Well, but then there's like water and flesh, and yeah." So you know, it's kind of you got to kind of find the the thing. So it's it's mysterious. It's not. Uh, it's a um, yeah. It's not a trivial thing to actually try to do this, and people have tried to to do do these sorts of things, and and it's kind of like. You know, again, you have to you have to have power. You have to have the right frequency yeah. to do sonic. Now, there are companies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can go up on the web and you can see their video <laughs> that make sonic devices. Yeah, and they're they're you know they're large sure. size. They're mounted on a truck. And now what those are high frequency. So this is like, oh, you have a riot or something. You want to get rid of people. Right. And it just pushes out. Think of your tweeters. Like 
the high end. Uh, it sounds like your uh, car alarm or your, yeah. your house alarm. That you know that. Yeah. And they'll turn it turn it right up. They can actually even talk, and it's highly focused. So, and again, this is a high frequency. Yeah. So your ears, it's 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 right in that perfect area of your hearing yeah. so you know you can you can go disperse and all that and disperse it's pretty disperse but here's the thing all of that that's that's the sound stuff mm-hmm. the scary one is the microwave stuff oh yeah yeah yeah. that's yeah, the yeah. real deal yeah. because that's a lot easier that uses radio frequency yeah and it's basically the same principle as radar or your microwave i, th- I think i read an article where, where they were also talking about uh like targeted sort of uh, directional EMP bursts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where it wasn't just out. It was a focus, like, mm-hmm. almost like a laser where you would, you know. Watch the video of that company, too. <laughs> <laughs> they basically took three people, stood them out on a field, and, again, they have a similar-looking thing. Yeah. Like the, the Sonic one, yeah. and a similar-looking thing. It's on a truck, and they point it, and they hit the button, and all of a sudden those people, like, run like hell. Mm. Because basically, it's set to send out uh, uh, a a radio frequency yeah. that basically just oh. I mean it's like your like your microwave it, it hits your skin yeah and yeah. it starts cooking cooking you you Man. you will not stand there basically everyone's like the sensation is you're standing there and all of a sudden you feel. Entirely hot and everything. Now, the thing yeah. I worry about is your eyeballs are really uh, sensitive to this stuff. Yeah. For example, radio yeah. operators, ham radio operators and things, they don't have their antennas and their outputs. They can actually go blind because they're getting radio waves, getting jammed. You get cataracts and you gotcha. go blind. It's, gotcha. a, it's yeah. a bad thing. So, let's talk radio, folks. But anyway, there's there's right. that, and they have those for like, ooh, let's use this for riot. And there's there's like videos and so stuff I, you can I, watch, and it's just like, oh, this is just. So I got a question then. Bad. When you're talking about the high frequency stuff, right? Right. What does that uh, What does that do to the animals? Because you know how you always you like dog whistles and stuff. Oh yeah. There's yeah. such a high frequency with the humans, we can't pick it up with our hearing, but yeah, dogs can. I mean, that must drive animal people just nuts. You know what I think is more fascinating? Hmm is um, the earth itself ah, makes yeah. lots of noise. I've heard it. And especially it. recording, yeah. Especially before an event like an earthquake, yeah. typically or maybe a volcano, but an earthquake. And they say and I've actually I've observed this as a matter of fact. I okay. actually have seen this happen, mm-hmm. uh, live and in person, that animals, because of their more sensitivity, will pick up on those frequencies, those things, the the earth disturbance in the forest before yeah. you yep. start feeling the tremor or the earthquake. Yeah, remember when um, we had that one? I yep, the spring break quake. I guess. Yep, it was spring break. Uh, my spring mom- break. Quick. Yeah, my mother was downstairs, and we have, at the time we had a collie dog. Mm-hmm. And she's downstairs, and of course she, uh, for a while, lived in L.A. and California and stuff. And so she was you know, she, earthquakes to her. Uh, she was used to them a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. been been around it. She knew what to do. But she said the first thing that she she knew that there was going to be an earthquake because her collie dog just started. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, and so she said. Uh, she said the funny thing was that he started act, you know, giving that sort of vibe, and she said literally she just walked over to the door jam, and stood into the door jam because she knew it was coming, and I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah. The, um, Interesting. But yeah, that's about the what animals. I was thinking of in 1993. Yes. Scotts Mills earthquake, yep. otherwise known as the Spring Break quake, because it happened over Spring, spring break. break. The kid, kids are home. Scotts Mills. It was five. It says here on the wiki is 5.6. On the scale, yeah. um, shook up, shook up Portland. Yeah, shook up the West Hills. So I was kind of in the West Hills ish, and like it shook us up real nicely. Five point five or something like that. Yeah, it was five point five. It says five six here. Yeah, but uh, that is exactly my story because I remember yeah. had cats, uh, cats, very sensitive. Sleep on the bed. Yeah, and uh, I remember 
because this happened at like five gosh yeah was it five in the morning five thirty in the morning five thirty four a.m yeah pacific standard time it happened mm-hmm. at five thirty four and i remember kind of vaguely waking up because the cat just like <laughs> jumped around and split feet don't fail me now and then yeah. it was a few minutes later yeah the thing <laughs> I was in a water bed. Oh. Yep. Yep. Do you feel like you're surfing at the time? Yeah. It yeah. was it was it was it was crazy. Yeah. And 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 um it's kind of up in the hills and there was like highways and there was like forest and then highways and stuff in the back past the forest. And so mm-hmm. it's like there and then all of a sudden it was like the slow it was a slow roll. Yeah, uh, which means you weren't at the epicenter. Portland wasn't wasn't at the epicenter, but it was mm-hmm. slow, kind of shake and roll, rolling out. And that those are the waves yeah. rolling out from the quake through the Earth's crust. Yeah, that's actually yeah. what you're feeling is those pressure waves going yeah. through the medium of dirt, Earth, sure, um, mm-hmm. rock, whatever. And uh, so things started. Shaken, shaking and bacon, it happened to be waterbed. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> and then you know, you immediately wake up and you're like, "What's that?" And my first thought, the first thought was that there was a truck or something that had driven uh, off the highway and was like, kind of going down a cliff or something like that. Yeah, that's kind of what we thought mm. at first, and then then a few another few seconds later, it was like, oh, it was okay. pretty much like. <laughs> Is this an earthquake? <laughs> and it was like, I believe it is. Yeah. And it was. It wasn't. Um, it was just kind of rolling and shaking. So nobody. We didn't feel very. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> the ten of us in the waterbed didn't feel. I'm just joking. <laughs> there was only two people in the waterbed. Okay. So, and the cat. Well, the cats. Um, right. And uh, and like it was ten of us. Yeah. Well, I guess you know if we include the cats, yeah. I guess there were more than two. The two humans in the bed. Right. Uh, well, I was one of them, just to be clear. Yeah, the, uh, the third <laughs> sister wife, man, she really freaked out. She was just, wow. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so it just kind of shook, and it was kind of like, uh, what? It, it was actually like, what should we do? It's like, don't know. It seems, seems you know, because it just sort yeah. of rolls it out and you're just kind of like sitting there yeah riding it out right yeah so it's like maybe just stay put you know right and And then the bad quakes where you're right at the epicenter and everything stuff is jerking right so almost an up and down thing because it's just yeah you're almost right on top of it yeah from what i remember though about spring break quake i remember i think it lasted longer than usual someone says this now correct me if i'm wrong and i probably am (laughs) But people said that uh, that usually uh, earthquakes last from anywhere usually like ten to twenty seconds, mm-hmm. and they from what I remember the spring bake quake I remember they said it lasted like thirty four seconds, and they were kind of marveling at the fact that it it had been sustained for that long. But usually that's, they don't last. That sounds about right. I, uh, I was just trying to look here, yeah, and see. I don't see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't it's see. Uh, just from what I five point six, remember. they said they always redo them. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really say how long it lasted. Um, but I I do recall it. It lasted. It seemed yeah. It seemed to be like a good a good good half minute. Yeah. To me, if I what remembering back. And that made me wonder, like the recent earthquake in Mexico, right? Oh, the really wow, bad seven seven one, yeah, seven two or something like that. It made me wonder how long that was sustained for. Well, you know, because uh, I think back. Well, I wonder. I mean, why it's. I don't remember, and I do remember there was an aftershock. Three point two that happened within the first hour of the main shock. I can't remember. And again, we were all in the Portland area, Portland Salem. Uh, just basically where it was on the fault line, Scotts Mills. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, it it rolled right out to Port Portland and Salem. Yeah. Area, felt it that far down. Um, yeah, I can't remember the aftershock. That might have been a little 
shift. Yeah. I remember um, talking about the, the, the animals. Uh, I remember once being in a basement area, and we would get, well, we get, folks, we get little tremors all the time. All the time, yeah. In fact, go up to USGS. You can you can see a real time map. Yeah, um, it's always really interesting when they start going. Hey, Mount St. Helens, or we're detecting earthquakes around Mount Hood, or whatever. That's yeah. always a good one to look. See all the little mini right. shifts. And it's just stuff is shifting down right. there, but it could indicate something bigger. Yeah, a little, you know that comes well, up. A lot of them are out in the ocean too, because I mean. Yep. But there yeah. are a lot. There's, There's a lot more if you, if you go, area. I mean, I'm not going to pull it up. We're almost done here. But if you go up to the USGS site yeah. and you pull up the area, there's a whole map and every little thing. And it's got the magnitude. And wow. what, and you'll be surprised how much stuff happens in our area. Oh, yeah. Especially if you have Pacific Rim. Yeah. That's yeah. always. Uh, but just uh, even in our area, Portland, yeah. I mean, it, stuff stuff you don't detect and then you do detect things and i remember leading up to the scotts mills earthquake there were a few tremors and again we we're kind of up in the west west side west hills which west is side. fault you know there's fault lines and mm-hmm. places up there uh we were getting little tremors here and there once in a while and i remember oh leading up to this being like down in the basement or whatever mm. Again, with the cat, you know how the cats follow you around the, you know, yeah. and on the computer or whatever, and yeah. all of a sudden the cat, like, does, did one of those four-leg jumps, mm. and, like, spun around <laughs> to run out, yeah. and at the same time, yeah. the bookshelf went creak, 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 just like creak, creak, just kind mm. of a little thing, and it was like, oh, I felt that, you know, I barely felt that, and but more like the book, you know, the bookshelf, yeah. and it's like, that was a tremor. Yeah. I know that was a tremor, and the cat was just like, like hid under the bed and wouldn't come out for the rest of the day, and it was just like a little tremor like that. Yeah, I think the cats hid for after this Scotts Mills earthquake. I think the cats were all hiding under the bed and freaking out. I went to work. Yeah. I was working at a software company, and it was the funniest thing about that. It was the earliest I'd ever gone to work because this was at five thirty a.m. Sure. And you, I mean, there should have been an earthquake every day because every employee at my my work showed up like, hey, since, crack of dawn. Since we're awake. Oh, you couldn't. Well, that was the whole thing. It yeah. was like the thing went out. No one was going back to sleep at that point. No. Uh-uh. It was like, uh, and it was like, wow, I'm wide awake. I can't even shut close my eyes now because once you rode one of those quakes out, you're like, I'm awake. I mean, it's better than coffee. I, yeah, I know there's going to be aftershocks. I just well, you just know. you just can't sleep, right? After it's over. Yeah. Of course, nowadays I'd probably just be like, ah, just drop a bomb on it. I don't care. No, but I was like, uh, wake yeah. me up when it gets to so seven. And it was like, right. yeah, it's five thirty in the morning. It's like, guess I'm going to have breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. Everything okay, you know, and then this and that. That it's like, guess I better just go. Coffee sloshing around. Gotta yeah. work. Because I'm, you know, yeah, it was bizarre. Mm. Very bizarre. So what you got going on this weekend, man? What's going on? <sighs> I don't know. I've just been playing. I've just been catching up. You know, I've mm-hmm. just been catching up. And I kind of almost got cut out. Yes, yesterday was kind of, I don't know what was going on with that. Um, what was going on yesterday? I'm, t- I'm trying to, like, uh, trying to like keep healthy from mm. the flu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, I hear... I hear everyone's like saying that there's a, you know, get a flu shot or whatever. Yeah, I, um, I got to get one of those. I mean, I had a touch of uh, the uh, uh, nasty uglies, uh, what, a week or two ago. A yeah. Week, a week ago now, and it just, it lingered. I was, be- you know, I, I got sick, then a day or so I was okay, then it just hit me again. And it's like, I hope this isn't, you know, I hope this isn't a seasonal thing where it lasts until... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I don't know what's going on yeah. with that. I'll, I'll be going in for my flu shot quite you soon. You know, I if you're if you're a person like me who likes to check out information, um, there uh, there are some good sites. The CDC, mm-hmm. of course, mm-hmm. tells you what's going on on a national level. But you can get information yeah. in Oregon. And when I I got the flu, I was down for a week. Eh, you know, 
five days, something like that. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and I I looked it up and I found it on Oregon. I could tell what 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 was being reported. It's just stuff that's reported. What strain or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they tell you. I mean, you have to. They have to take it from like hospitals or whatever as mm. public information. So. If you go to your doctor, you don't. You just have the flu and write it out. It's yeah. not going to show up on the data, but uh, but yeah. you can see what was reported, mm. and uh, it's really interesting. I, I could pinpoint exactly what I had come down with. It was uh, like, oh, it's this is what's happening in our area, and if I look at the symptoms, gotcha. Guess what? <laughs> That's yeah. what's going on, and there's usually like a couple different flus. Yeah, it's not just one. It's no. Usually, and then the, last year there was one that uh, hey, they always say it's dangerous or whatever. Old people. It, see, I'm in the point where it's like, am, am am I like the old person now? Am I the <laughs> at risk? Like, yeah. you know, I don't know. But uh, you know, they they always have people have immune system. Sure. Couple, and, you know, um, kids. Um, but um, but you can really see what kind of rolls in yeah and usually um you know usually it's like a kind of um more milder kind of a thing yeah now see the problem was i think last year the deal was and this is always the thing Mm -hmm. the shot that you get the vaccine Mm -hmm. doesn't always cover what's rolling in no the guess right so i i I gotta tell you something i don't (sighs) Uh, see, people people label me as like anti this and that. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'm not, but I think we could do a lot better with the vaccinations and all that stuff. And I read, yeah. I read stuff yeah. last year or this year. Researchers going, we could we could make a vaccine that covers this. But how are we going to solve cold and flu medicine? Exactly. How yeah. are we gonna make money? Yeah, gotta make the money. And the the thing is, is that uh, but there there you know there there was some research and some really credible stuff that said, yeah, we could probably put it in where you go and get a shot. Maybe you get a shot every, you know, get a booster every few years and stuff. And it's yeah. like you're covered. This is gonna go out and nail any any uh, H whatever. N because it's the always the right. H H one N one well it's H H-N, yeah H X N X is how they designate the typical flu viruses right it's kind of a good news bad news thing good news is hey you know we we're covering all well, of it bad news is the Nyquil people are pissed well they, they what they do is they <laughs> yeah. so the way the vaccine is done is they go out and a lot of it and this is the other thing too. Like, you know, the avian flu and the swine flu? Sure. Where does that come from? Asia. Yeah. From China. Asia. <laughs> it's yeah. like... And what happens is it mutates and hops mm-hmm. from the light, from the swine to the humans. From the swine. From the birds, you know. But, like, not always... Yeah. That's the other thing, too. Like, some of those, like... Like, we had a bird flu out... Breaker, they were worried about it, but it, it hadn't gone to humans. Right. It was just infecting birds. But it can mutate and then infect humans. It's possible. And that's mm-hmm. what they're always, that's what the CDC and all these, since, since the great influenza outbreaks of the early 20th century. The Spanish influenza, the 1918. Spa- it killed millions. Yes. yes. Killed millions of people. This Worldwide, is how, yeah. how the, the vaccines came. Like, yeah, w- during World War One, I, I want to say. Yeah, it was uh, the a 19, Spanish, 11 or something like Spanish that? influenza was 18, 1918. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, killed, yeah. Estimated, right like, estimated killed, like, worldwide, like... Uh, Several million. Yeah, I wanted to say almost three million. Yeah, two point yeah. nine, I think. But yeah. give or take, who, who knows how many actually? You know, but, but it was around three million. Yeah. Think of the state of medicine back in nineteen eighteen. Very true. I mean, I think they were still even using still leeches and stuff, yeah. and I mean, two, it was two degrees from bleeding somebody. Yeah, because I mean, there wasn't there wasn't even uh, I don't even think there was a. Uh, you know penicillin and all that stuff. I don't even think that that was, uh, you know, yeah, I don't think antibiotics. You know, I don't think we're. I don't think we're Jonah, Jonah Salk was on the scene yet. Nope. Mm. Nope. 
So that was all like, uh, you know, through the 20th century, mid 20th century. I mean, the polio vaccine came online in the 50s. Right. Smallpox. Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, rubella. Uh, Which a lot of those we have eradicated. We have. Through uh, vaccination. So see, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, folks. Right. I'm just a, a medical tuberculosis. S- safety person. You know, back, back when tuberculosis yeah. was called the what, consumption? TB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people died of consumption. There's still TB. people, and they, they still do come out once in a while. Yeah. There's little outbreaks. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah it's a different time. And, and yeah. the the, um, the other thing, too, is little known that people know, is there there are treatments for the flu. Remember, a vaccine vaccinates you from the flu. It yeah. basically gives you... It 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 it, it uh, shoots stuff into your bloodstream that creates antibodies right. to kill the flu right. that you would get infected with. So it uses your natural immune system to go, hey, we've seen that before. Let's create the antibodies and get rid of it. It's not always 100% effective either. You can still get the flu even though you have flu vaccine because you may not – the vaccine may not address the particular – the particular strain of the flu, right. it also can just be not so infect, uh, effective. They always say, well, it'll be at least the symptoms might be less. Right. But the cold and flu stuff, uh, a lot of that mutates at such a rapid sort of... Oh, yeah. That it usually a strain may or may not cover it yeah. because by the time you get it, it's you know been yeah. morphed into something. Well, it generally, I mean, generally when it hits, you know, the area, it's... They've identified it, and they know whether or not. So they, they yeah. do this. They, they figure out. They have, the, the, the like, CDC, for example. Mm-hmm. They have a library of these viruses since, like, the early 20th century. Yeah. So they can go out, and they formulate these things. And I don't know. There's this whole thing, too, about using chicken eggs and whatnot. And uh, you got to be careful what's in there. And I don't know. I'm not anti-vax, okay? Mm-hmm. But, um, but read about all the stuff very fascinating yeah. and the other thing is like i said there are treatments for the flu like if you do get the flu especially if you get really sick and you have to go to like the doctor or the hospital and you're sick there are these well i know that this is the product name but tamiflu mm-hmm. and that this actually stuff that you know that that you can take there's a there's another thing there's another thing too that's like i don't know like that it, it's like they they give it to you. It can be used. It's like if you get something really nasty, like mm-hmm. anthrax or something. And oh yeah, yeah I can't yeah, remember yeah, what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody I know, will know. I, right, you went in and got it. Okay, yeah. I'll have to look that up. But, but they I, have I know those. Exactly but like the, there's like the Tamiflu, and there's there's a couple others if you read about it that you could, if you got the flu and you're suffering, you can, yeah, take care of it. And I don't know. Yeah, it was popular for a while when when it was all the rage to mail people powdered anthrax. Remember that in the nineties? Oh God! And uh, I know that they. God. Anyway, yeah, I got to so, look this up now. I can't. I, yeah, so that's fun. No, it's not fun. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'll be reading about the flu season, doing that research. And sonic waves, and uh, I don't know. Just yeah, get ready uh, next week. Uh, we'll got some that some things. Oh, doing a uh, if you're well, I don't know. Should I bring that up? Hmm. Nah, forget it. We did it on the show yes or Wednesday. So I'll be doing an event next week, and we'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be around. And oh, yeah. uh, maybe I, I was looking at the timbers and the play, how that's going and all that. Sunday, o- October 22nd, which is a little ways away, is the final uh, Cascadia Cup, it looks like. Ah. Vancouver at Portland. Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, I think that's the that. And I don't know. I'll just. <laughs> I watched the Orville last night. I really like that show. Yes, yeah, that so comes on on Thursdays now. Oh, your show that you were talking about comes on this Sunday. The one with Craig, uh, what's his name, uh, about the two kind of comedy and they're 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 uh, oh, ghosted, ghosted, yeah, ghosted. Yeah. That comes on on Sunday. Yeah, I have to. Uh... Yeah, you send me a reminder because, okay. like I said, I like that 
that guy and I, I'll give it a shot. If it's any, if it's anything as good as something like the Orville, which I don't know, I'm loving that show. Right. Uh, oh, I love that show. Yeah, it's a cool episode, show. I, I mean, he's he's like riffing off of old Star Trek: The Next Generation. Fine, whatever. Yeah. It fills a, it fills a void. Yeah. And we'll see how the Sunday the new official Star Trek Discovery comes out yeah, this Sunday we actually after spending our time for two hours yeah this Sunday I think we get to actually meet the crew and the captain of the Discovery and wow. the ship the Discovery wow. ship now that is only in CBS All Access now right oh yeah, yeah I, gotta get, pay for I it. guess there's a uh, kind of minor kerfuffle oh yeah uh, because in in Europe I guess it's, it's being aired, yeah it's also uh, over there It's a, they put it on sci-fi Oh yeah, and yeah. I guess a lot of people in the states are angry. Yeah, even I guess in Canada too, they they show it in sci-fi, and people are like, "This is not right." Yeah, it's 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 on. Yeah. I know it's on Netflix. Yeah, uh, yeah. But CBS is pushing their their thing, and yeah, fans. Boy, in my Facebook, the the fans are are not going for the really access. Huh. I'm just doing it for this show. Yeah. Well, what? Because real, so real quick, right before back. we right, right before we get off the air here. Yeah. Uh, what what do you think of the new show? Well, because uh, I man, there's some real strong feelings either way. Some people love it, and some people are like, man, this is just you know. Well, here here's so the, I, I don't know. here's the realization mm-hmm. that I have have had of the show, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, I I don't know yet because I haven't seen this next episode, episode three. So here's uh, here's here's my the prelude, and then here's my huge complaint. Okay, they played an hour of it. On free TV. Yeah. And then it's like, well, if you want to see the next hour. And it was a cliffhanger. It was they like a sucker two, you it was like man. a two parter. Yeah. I mean it wasn't it was episode one and episode two, but it was like basically, well uh, if you watch that first one But uh to be continued. Yeah, where are you gonna go yeah. next? The and so they showed the first one on television yeah. and then they said, If you wanna yeah. see what else happens the next hour, yeah. Go get that CBS All Access uh, online and buy that and you can see it. And here's the thing. It was two hours of prequel. It was two hours of, of setup as to what's going on. Uh, we, we, have, we haven't... We're, we're not in the show yet. Yeah. We're not on the Discovery. We haven't seen the damn Discovery, which yeah. is the ship, which is the, it's named for. We haven't seen it yet. Okay? Right. We haven't seen the captain yeah, of the Discovery yeah, yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there were other captains and other characters, yeah. and they died. So it was like, what did I just? I watched like a two-hour prequel movie, <laughs> and uh, uh, for which you had to pay for half of it. Yeah. And so my feeling is, I think I think CBS kind of screwed up. I think they should have just put those two hours on TV. Sure. I think they should have just put those out for free. I think they should put the whole series just on. Well, TV. well, there's a lot of fans who believe that. Because they're still showing the commercials, and yeah. it, it, you can, and and there's like uh, for three dollars more, you can get it commercial free. Oh, here's my other issue. Mm. Here's my other issue with mm-hmm. this with with this thing. Unlike now, I think CBS and Showtime own each other. I, I, I'll compare it to yeah. Twin Peaks. Okay. Because Twin Peaks did the same thing. It was on Showtime, so yeah. if you had Showtime, you could watch it. Or if you didn't have Showtime. You just like this, you could go. They were like, you can go get the app. You can, uh, whatever, register, yeah. pay whatever it was yeah. for the Showtime online and watch Twin Peaks. Okay, gotcha. fine. And but here's here's the thing. That was like, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to say that each episode of Twin Peaks was an hour, like fifty eight minutes or whatever, fifty some odd minutes. Mm-hmm. These Star Trek discoveries are forty minutes a piece. Wow. So it's not an hour. Yeah, 40 minutes, 20 minutes of commercial airtime. Wow. Yeah. And they're wow. even online, even online. And I'm a little cheesed yeah. by that. Yeah. I'm like, look, if you want to have people pay for it, even if they have to watch the commercials, don't give, them, don't give you 40 minutes an episode. And give them their money. 55. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> play the commercials. Do it for an hour 20. You're yeah. online. So I have a big problem with that. Yeah. Cause, and then I look at it and I go, well, if you pay $3 more and do the commercial free stuff online. Yeah. So that you're going to watch a 40 minute show. 
And they'll still, uh, yeah. apparently, they'll still throw in commercials for, like, their shows or whatever. I don't know. So I don't uh, know what it is. I mean, and well, CBS commercials are, oh, <laughs> you know, old people. Hey, here's yeah. the other thing. I, well, it was a little bit better. On CBS proper, okay. they have, there were still the drug, the drug, you know, the old people with the getting the drugs. Yeah. You know, and that's always, you know, I mean, uh, I grew up watching Lawrence Welk with my grandma, right? Mm -hmm. I knew everything there was about Geritol. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> right, yeah. They have yeah. some car commercials. They have car commercials on that. A yeah, bunch of car commercials. Yeah, to Geritol. You know? I remember But I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know how you watch this stuff and like every commercial, you know, commercial break and here's Bill and, and Martha, and they're out in the garden, and they're retired. And they're, yeah. Oh, my knee hurts a little bit. Bill, let me, you know, she's shoving Bill's, give me some you know, Geritol. Bill's throat, you know. Have to ask your far, ask your doctor about right. I don't right. know. Or the two friends. One's like, oh, I just, yeah. you know, I used to have that tooth, Elma. Oh, yeah. Until uh, I got some it's, Geritol. It's, it's, well, it's not Geritol. I know. It's flat out drugs. These are the drug companies selling whatever. They're pain meds. They're whatever. Yeah. Whatever, you know, digestive. Dig I mean, it's like this problem or that problem or that problem. And I've always said, do enough people in the world in this country have that problem that they should be watching a commercial on major television about to ask their <laughs> doctor about because yeah. pain pain yeah you can see that right sure but and by the way this is what's screwed up with healthcare folks because yeah. drug companies spend so much money putting this stuff on television that's why your drugs are expensive mm -hmm. they say it's R&D it, it yeah it ain't the R&D they man. say it's R&D yeah. That's BS. Yeah. Prime time. That's it, it's 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 prime time marketing, and it's putting yep. their names on your stadiums and stuff with the box seats and everything. Mm -hmm. Don't be don't be don't be fooled. Right. It's America. The money goes right. into marketing and sales and big three martini dinners and <laughs> I'm telling you, arr, don't get me started. Now I'm getting. See, yeah, I didn't have my cranky time. It's a feel-good, funky, fresh <laughs> Friday, man. Doc didn't have his cranky time this morning <laughs> on the show. Uh, uh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't have to rework this Doc, are, Doc, are you feeling down? Because I've got a pill right here, you oh. know, made by Pfizer. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you, you come at me with that. I got your <laughs> pill right here. Right. And you will need pills after I put my pill in your face. Dude, did you see the end of that mm -hmm. coffee with curmudgeons on Friday, man? Yeah. The guy tried to give the other guy a pill, and then the guy punched the other dude. Yeah. And it sounds edited, man. I got to watch on Monday. Or, yeah. my, or in my case, you'll be, you'll be trying to, like, sell me all those drugs for mm. all my problems, and you'll get a face full of tofu and broccoli and quinoa or something. That's right. And, That's right. Eat right. I Let's just, start there. Hey, did I just get splashed with yeah. Trader Joe's dark roast coffee? Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's so much. There's yeah. Elon Musk's <laughs> mom is Cover Girl, Mrs. Musk. Yes, Elon. I uh, I can't remember. It was in hmm. the news just uh, yesterday. Huh. She's 69 years old, wow. and she is a Cover Girl. She was uh, has been a model. And this is and it was like this is Elon Musk's mom. Yeah, it was like oh weird. Okay, uh, didn't, hi Mrs. Didn't, Musk. Yeah, and they had a big thing, and she's like sixty nine year old, uh, great looking woman. Mm. Uh, you know, for uh, spokesperson in that, Dream. and it was and she's a health she's a uh, health wellness person. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, looking good, feeling good. And I, I saw a little blurb where it said, well, what, what's what's your secret? It's like, A, don't smoke. Stop <laughs> smoking. Well, there you go. Ding, ding, ding. Okay? Yeah. yeah. How about that? How about none of this? Okay? Yeah. And then it's like, you know, eat right. Get some exercise. Yeah. Drink water. Yeah. Get, yeah. get some good sleep. Right. Uh, you know, we, we're not all perfect here. <laughs> no. But, no, I... but. I'm running on like a, what? <laughs> Maybe back up on the coffee. <laughs> barely two and a half hours today. Oh, dude. I was up late last night. I, I got yeah. you beat. Oh, yeah? You've been up all night? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I hit I hit it, and then the alarm went off, and I was like, Isn't that, oh, I got time, right? And then I was looking, you know, <laughs> then I'm ask, asking 
my my buddy over here. <laughs> what time is it? It's eight a.m. Oh crap! Yeah, yeah. I guess a uh, power nap's out of the question. Uh, well, I was doing that earlier, so gotcha. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 there's sports on, I'm sure. Oh yeah. So you know, ducks play I cow. Oh really? Yeah. See, I haven't. haven't Seven thirty at night tomorrow night. I haven't been so sporty right yet. Yeah. I'll, I'll get on it. I usually, I usually get like Timbers the, play. the yeah, and usually the soccer, the international soccer and stuff yeah. that usually starts really happening for me in the October, November, you know, kind gotcha. of the, yeah. that time frame. So right, because they Premier League, they they just started right, like a couple weeks yeah, ago, yeah, a while ago, yeah, a couple yeah, few weeks ago, and, and and Champions League too. So right. Anyway, we'll, we'll get it. I, we got to find out a <laughs> Jay Z schedule, right? So yeah. he 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 is not scheduled. our missing sports desk yeah. guy. Yeah, we're, I got to talk to him because we were. I've been, that's on my list of things to do. Gotcha. And there were oh, and there's college football too. Yeah. So I don't know. Saturday college football, Sunday yeah. NFL. You know. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Anything else interesting? Um, no. no, not really. I'm, I, I'm I, sure. I feel I, uh, like we're missing something. But. Well, you know how I moved away uh, from the Redskins. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you even like say that name. Well, the Washington, the the Washington football team. I've decided I'm not Ugh. going to uh, 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 follow like them until they change their name. Yeah. No. So I've selected a new team. Unacceptable to me. I've uh, <laughs> I've selected a new team, the uh-huh. Minnesota Vikings. He was. Oh. It was my grandfather's and uh, favorite yeah. team, and also, I mean, my grandmother came from. He came from Norway, so, so, I'm, so I'm you're gonna, good. So I'm good. I'm gonna have uh, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, a lot in of people fact, like that. In fact, after this broadcast, I want to go to the town center. Oh wow! I'm gonna buy me a Minnesota Vikings cap. Yeah. So if you see me walking around the Clackamas Town Center, say, "Ooh, hello." Yeah. That's there like a uh, kind of purple, right? Purple and gold. Purple and gold. I've seen. I yeah. had neighbors once that were that was their team. Minnesota Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were kind of from Minnesota though. So eh? it was kind of like, well, okay. Yeah, you know. yeah, we from Minnesota. Yeah, no, yeah. they were like, or well, they were from. I don't know, but they were Minnesota Vikings. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. I just figure you're okay yeah. until you go to Iceland or Denmark, and it's like. Oh, Vikings, huh? You know, and they do we all run around pillage? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's fine. Vikings are fine. Yeah. Birds like Seahawks and stuff, good. Yeah. Vikings, good. good. Heck, generic. Denigrating, uh, right? Other peoples by skin color or whatever, very, very, uh, very bad. Yeah, I mean, change. Your name now. Right. My son was like, but why, why, you know, you've liked them forever. Why are you doing it? And I, I patiently you. explained to him why. And he goes, huh, really? Is that bad? I said, listen, because the team has run around 80 years, you've been kind of uh, sold on the fact that it, it must be acceptable because the team's so old, right? All right. But so I told him, I said, listen, you, you have friends who are African American, right? And he says, yeah. I said, "What? What if the team was not called the? Yeah, 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 what if they were called them? Yeah, yeah, you know." And he looked at me. He goes, "You know, I never thought about it like that." Yeah, no, we don't. And we I don't. said, "I didn't think about it like until I was, I got into a, uh, a really, really cool conversation with a local Portland comedian. We were talking, mm-hmm. and we started talking football. And he asked about that, and I was like, uh, and he goes, ooh, he goes, ooh, he goes, what if it was called this?' Yeah, and I had no answer for it. I looked at him like." You know, I've never thought about yeah. it that way. Yeah, you know, no, I, I mean, and my grandfather on my mom's side it is half Cherokee, right? Well, so, I mean, they, I got a little bit of a uh, little strain of yeah. Native American myself. But you're right; I never thought about it before, and I'd wrestled with it for a year or two, and I, it finally, the crisis of conscience, you know, conscience. No, I mean, it's, it caught it's up, and I said, "I can't, I can't do it." It's, it's just it, well, you and know? with everything that's going on with that. NFL crap and all yeah. this stuff. I don't know. It's crazy. But it was just a very personal just, thing for me, and I just no, it's decided just crap. I was, it's, it's, couldn't it's, do it. Get it out of here. I mean, there's just no room for that in 2017. And I don't care if the owner – I mean, that that means that owner is so out of touch. I mean, it, here's yeah. what I like. Yeah. The NBA, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had the – was the Clippers, right? Mm-hmm. That guy acted up. He's gone. He got bounced, yeah. 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 
And good, good on you. Of course, there's no room for that. There's no. no room for that in the NBA, but there's no room for it in the NFL either. No. There's no room for it for any sports. There shouldn't be any room for it anywhere. We had like what, the World anywhere. Series a year or two ago, right? Yeah. Chicago Cubs. Hey, Cubs. Cute, right? Love then the we had Cubbies, Cleveland. Yeah. Chief and, Wahoo. Yeah. Uh, man, yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I know. It, uh, but I mean, there, there are there are others though that I, don't know, I just can't names like the Florida State Seminoles. I think that does a pretty decent job, I don't except know. for the I guy just, that runs just, around on horseback. But even nah, nah, Kansas nah, nah, City nah. Chiefs is kind of generic. Nah, I so I, I don't know. It, it it's weird. It's tough. It is weird. Yeah. I, <sighs> I just. But I I, I'm I, a, I decided I'm going to follow the Vikings. Yeah, like and I'm it. excited about it, even though they're a good team, right? Yeah, they're okay. I mean, they're yeah. they're they're kind of rebuilding. Football is so weird for me. American yeah. football. I, w- like, I was thinking about Tennessee Titans though, because you know I'm a huge Ducks fan, I and of course the quarterback for Tennessee is Marcus Mariota, huh? the Heisman Trophy winner, you know, from Oregon. And really, yeah. So I, I was thinking about that, but you know, my grandfather's favorite team was the Vikings. I got a lot of Norwegian. Well, there in you me. go. There you go. I'm going. But, I mean, that's that, it's a that's a winner. It's a winner. That's a winner. It's a win-win. Yeah. Besides. Plus, plus I, who doesn't like a Viking hat? With the, right, with the horns. They actually don't have the horns. No, I've I know. Seen, but... I've been to Denmark. I've actually seen the Viking armor yeah. in museum. The, the horns, it's like, who came? Don't I they mean, usually have that, like, it's still thing, yeah. kind of a tassel almost thing mm, on top? Maybe. They call Sometimes. it a something. It's more just like kind of like an armor metal helmet. Like, like an, an Iron bronze Man. Age, yeah, armor. Bronze Age kind of. Yeah, gotcha. it still kind of looks like the Vikings. Yeah, I want the horns, but it—I don't know where the horns came from. <laughs> I want the horns, man. Yeah, that's what everyone's like in the museum. Going, where's the horns? It was like I don't know. Right, What's that guy's name. Sh- shut up! Shut up and eat your loot, Fisk. Yeah, stop it. Yeah. That I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, no, I think it's coming out next week. Mm. That new Blade Runner, October sixth. Ah, it, it actually, I got I get this whole planned out. My birthday's October sixth. Oh, yeah, yeah. The movie comes out October sixth. I told my wife, clear your schedule because I'm we're gonna go see Blade Blade <laughs> so, Runner. So unlike after the show, unlike other things like new Star Trek series mm-hmm. and other things where they're not even letting critics screen it, mm. like oh, <laughs> that's not always a good thing. Uh, there there have been some. I mean, there the you know there there's there's some early yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, I think now you they embargo, like, you can't do the review before it's, you know, you can't spoil. You don't want to spike it, it before, yeah. Like, you can't, like, in some cases, it's like you can talk about it, but you can't talk about the movie until the movie's released. And gotcha. also, the, these things, like, end up, like, in, uh, like, released over, like, in the UK, like, in London, before yes, it comes to the like US. like the week before. So I think like that's that, actually, yeah. that might be what went on this week ah. but the early the early uh scuttlebutt is is good good and i went up they have new trailers and they made uh little mini prequel movies mm. on youtube yeah you can watch them with the actual characters wow like that whole actual thing just like little just yeah. like little bits i mean they're not i don't know what they had to do with the story kinda. well there's the one with jared leto and a bunch of mm-hmm. the cast and he goes in there and does some stuff and then the other guy does some stuff and nice. you're like okay that looks cool it looks like blade runner looks like blade runner yeah you know yeah looks they got the look so yeah it's looking good i was looking at that and uh getting caught up in the star wars rumors cuz you know it's only a couple months the right. last jedi. jedi so you know yeah. what the big rumor is there what's I that see we're going way over time <laughs> the big rumor what's the big rumor darth vader yeah we're gonna get we're gonna get some darth some oh he's gonna make an appearance yeah Ooh, that's probably cool. we would think probably flashback thinking uh, right because darth's not around anymore uh, but see the last movie the rogue one which was last year Remember, Obi Wan kind of showed up in a sort of, you know. So, so, so the the rumor guy, <laughs> who I go to mm-hmm. on the on YouTube, and he, he's funny. He's an interesting dude. And I Reddit people, some people like him, and a bunch of people on Reddit don't like him. And, uh, I don't know, but he's an interesting guy, mm-hmm. and he's gotten mm-hmm. a few things right. And then he's like, "Look, I got some things right." And they're <laughs> like, "You lucky." I don't know. You know, it's yeah. these folks, right? Yeah. So you don't know, but uh, the, the 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 main rumor guy, he, he's he's saying we're gonna get it all, 
we're gonna we're gonna get a Yoda. Ooh. We we might get a Obi Wan, and we might and 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 Darth Ooh. Vader. Ooh. But wow. here's the thing: it might uh, like uh, uh, the 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 speculation is that uh, uh, it, uh, the Obi Wan it might it might be just the voice. Uh. But but huh? Someone asked Frank Oz. The puppeteer and director for Yoda, yeah. Who yeah. did Yoda? He was come came from the Mupp, Jim Henson Muppets and directed stuff and yeah, whatnot. He was Fozzie Bear mm-hmm. and Miss Piggy. He's also and... in the Blues Brothers. Yeah, makes little cameos. Um, mm-hmm. And he's he's the voice. He's the he's Yoda, right? Mm-hmm. Someone asked Frank Oz about Star Wars, and he gave a very cryptic, mm. yeah, like I, you, it was like I, I, I. I cannot speak <laughs> on anything <laughs> that has to do with Yoda. Like it was wow. like and everyone of course when they when they say yeah something very very Oh, and the other thing is that the, in the you know you can you can go up and get all these little little secret things, right? Mm-hmm. The internet is so great. I love it. <laughs> so there was some spotted some pictures, and there are reports that they've seen people carrying around Yodas on the set Ooh. of the Last Jedi. Mm. So that's the other thing. So everyone's like, "Ooh, I mean, all these guys." So, so the deal is, is we think that Force ghosts. Yeah, because you know, yep. Ray is going to be in training with Luke. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, so there's, there's, so we may, yeah. I remember Obi Wan kind of made his little. Well, that's kind of use the Force. Well. Well, and and they did make they did make an appearance in not necessarily an appearance, but they were in the Force Awakens. Gotcha. Because she was she was in a room, yeah. and then the lightsaber, and then in the background you could hear Obi Wan's voice and stuff. That you could hear the voices. So we've already heard the voices in the yeah. last one. Did you see it yet? I've you not seen it. You've got to catch up. I know. Dude. I'm. You guys see Rogue One? Have you seen that? That one's a good one. No, I haven't seen that. You gotta. Did you like Star Wars? The original oh, yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. See Rogue One. Mm. Let's put it this way. Okay. I like Darth Vader. Always loved Darth Vader. Oh, sure. uh, get me, get me sure. some Darth Vader. And that was the thing when they did Rogue One. They kind of worked it through, and then they kind of said, you know, maybe we need a little more Darth Vader here. Because what do you want to give the fans? Darth Vader. You got it. They put Darth Vader in it, and it made the movie. It just put a bow on that movie. It was like, yeah, yeah, the big breathy guy with the lightsaber. <laughs> Give it up. You know, two of my favorite characters were in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. The the evil guy. Okay. The Death Star guy. Yeah, yeah. And Darth Vader. There you go. I like it. The, the two of my favorite characters in Star Wars. Right. They're all over Rogue One. There you go. I know exactly. So, mm. gotta go check that out, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Chewbacca dude. <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't think. Chewbacca, but Chewbacca's in the new ones. I'm also anti Ewok too. Chew- I know. I don't trust them. Che- Chewbacca's in in the the For- Force Awakens and will be Often. will be in uh, in uh, okay, the Chewbacca. Last Jedi. Okay. So check it out. You gotta check them out. Yeah, Chewbacca's there. Okay. Oh man! So anyway, so Blade Runner, yep, Star Wars, yep. I'm hoping hey, there's got to be like some sort of flashback or whatever. Got to be some to Darth Vader, yeah. Because we're with Luke, right? And Luke's got to be like, well, back when Dad used to take me to the races and buy me ice cream. <laughs> Do you want chocolate or Rocky Road? <laughs> Pass me the nachos. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's that 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 those chips with goo. Yeah, yeah, the yellow goo that's kind of like. Thanks, Dad. You put it on there it after five minutes. It congeals. Him, like, mm, right. <laughs> the nachos with goo. <laughs> right. I love the pot. The, you know, chips Dad. out there by itself and dips itself. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, oh wow, that's that's using the force. Dad. When can we go back to the pod races again? <laughs> right. I'm a single dad and I've got a job to do. <laughs> cue the uh, and they, they, they're, cue their the Harry Chapin is, music. Right, and their favorite football <laughs> team is the uh, Oakland Tuscan Raiders. Oh, I like it. Yeah. All right. We're out of here. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, I'm going to make myself a cup of good morning, America. You all want some? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the best damn coffee you're gonna get anywhere, buddy.